It's Tuesday night. And we're live on air. We're live on the air. We're live on YouTube. It's Guns and Gadgets with Military Mike and Xander, my co-host. How are you, Mike? Good, buddy. How about you? Yeah, not too bad. Oh, we decided that Xander is now from Australia. Yeah, we didn't decide that. Oh, okay, we did without telling you. Yeah. Sorry about that. Sorry. Um, and also, uh, apparently, next week, you're going to have to bring in a dingo. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I, that's not going to happen either, to be honest with you. And don't let it eat your baby. All righty, there we go. He's let me down twice already. The show just started. And our engineer, McLovin, everybody's vaping tonight. <laughs> These guys both have their little vape machines, and I'm just over here breaking wind and eating tacos. Tonight's show is brought to you by... No, I, can't, I guess I can't really do that. You can't really do that. No, that wouldn't be a good idea. Budweiser and Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't care because we'll do it anyway. Yeah, we don't care. It's just for fun radio. And uh, once again, we're, uh, you know, eating tacos, playing with laptops, tablets, smartphones, drinking beer, sitting around with some guys talking on the radio. It, it just doesn't get much better than this. Yeah, no, it's all right. I, I just can't see anybody in Russia pulling this one off. Yeah. And and I'm a Russian. There's, tried, a, lot, there's you know. a lot of Russians. If, <laughs> if they did, would you watch it? Yes, I would. Just for fun. <laughs> that would be China, would it? <laughs> just, 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 just for fun radio. That was great. Just that was as good as my Australian accent, by the way. So. <laughs> you like. You like now. Oh, you like just for fun you radio. Like just the fun radio. Oh. I like it. Is. And we have guns. Gun to work. Gun to work. Cheap AK-47. Okay, we'll get into <laughs> Sanders' head went straight up, man. That's an argument for later in the show. We'll be dealing with AR-15s versus AK-47s. And we're actually going to shoot at each other, so definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel. And then we're going to see who has a better shot group <laughs> well, yeah. based on body count. <laughs> <laughs> Got to practice. Yeah. Ghost round. Oh, yeah. So uh, we'll be needing a new engineer next week. If you have any experience with working on board, <laughs> please call in. So, uh, how's everybody's week? Everybody good? Xander, where you at, man? How's uh, how's the engineering world? We uh, it was good. Week was good. Um, my firm is a civil engineering surveying firm. I work in the surveying department, and um, it was a good week. Do y'all do uh, like the uh, topography maps and we do. Yep. stuff like that? So yep, we do topo. Got a question for you. Cool. It was posed to me a while back about GPS. From what I understand, like the GPSs that we have in our cars and stuff and the ones we have on our phones is pretty much based on, I, I don't want to say sea level, but I want to say surface level maybe. And then there is actually GPS that goes further below for you guys doing survey work. Yeah, the, the consumer GPSs are honestly very inaccurate they're they're good to maybe 50 100 feet the way they get around that is algorithms in the app so if you're using google maps you know google uses the um the topography and the gps signal to to try and pinpoint your location a lot more accurately oh, okay. than the gps signal alone will right. allow we have um we have systems that are after adjustment are accurate to, you know, a hundredth of a foot. Um, Jeez, but, really? Well, but we have to wait three days for the military to publish the uh, the data we need to actually convert it to mm. that level of accuracy. So even for us, the day we go out and do the work, it's, it's inaccurate. the day you get done, right? Yep, until the government decides, hey, we'll tighten that up for you. How many satellites now? 36? Total, I have no idea. That's cool. No idea. Um, I'd, I'd heard they had upgraded. Is, is somebody else hear something? Or is it just me? Am I picking up Soviet I a, jamming? I heard a phone ding. Yeah, oh, my phone ding. okay. I thought I heard, like, the Soviet guy talking in my head again, going, Oh, you think it gets 47 funny, huh? Um, that was not a Russian accent. It was kind of. Dove. All right. Is Dove not a... All right, so uh, that's very cool. We used to use a system called a dagger. Right. And it was... You know, you had to freaking tune in three so you could get triangulation. Mm -hmm. That is a discussion for another show, I'm sure, because just 
talking about uh, satellite triangulation is enough to drive you crazy. So, unfortunately, got to do this part. So, McLevin, how was your week? It was good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Hey, boss, yeah. boss man's yelling at me. Oh, right boss is always yelling at us. Uh, that's the best thing about technology. He can yell at us from afar. So, are you in trouble? Is he talking about all the trash in front of the screen? No, he, he's he's like, basically like, all that Russian talk, go to the chair. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Did you hear about the chair, Xander? No. You didn't okay. see it when you walked in? Our... Uh, our our illustrious leader, uh, the czar, <laughs> the czar of just for of fun, the, the czar of the Politburo, known as just for fun, <laughs> um, has built an electric chair. Yeah, no lie, dude. That thing right there, and and you guys on YouTube World, sorry, you'll have to go to our pages on Facebook and whatnot, and see the videos of people actually getting electrocuted, which I'm thinking is illegal. Could oh, just yeah. be me. No, it, it's um, almost certainly illegal. Yeah, and it's so funny because uh, he gets zapped, Denise gets zapped, Scotty jumps back in there, gets zapped again, and then he goes and gets his own meter, his voltage meter. <laughs> yeah. What was it? What was it putting out? Uh, one twenty. Yeah, and then 118. 118 right was in the there. lowest hit. Okay. Yeah. How many amps? Uh, well, we didn't talk amps because we are live and we didn't want any reper legal repercussions. Right. <laughs> but uh, you have to see the videos. They're hugely funny. I'll have to, are they on the... They're on the, uh, they're on the morning Facebook? show. Yeah, they're on the morning show. It. Okay, I'll take Yeah, it. they're on the morning show. Not to be confused with the videos of Doc driving through a neighborhood. I saw Doc's... Uh, <laughs> it was Saturday or Sunday morning at Starbucks. Yeah, that's a... Oh, you saw Doc? Yeah, I oh, saw okay. her at uh, Starbucks. She had <laughs> no idea who I was. Isn't that I cool? introduced... I said, hey, Doc, <laughs> Alex, I did Guns and Gadgets, met you the other night. Blank stare. It's like, <laughs> who the hell are you? You didn't drink my margarita, did you? <laughs> <laughs> they don't have margaritas at Starbucks, do they? No. no I'm just saying. No. That'd be pretty cool. No, they're starting to do beer and wine in the evenings, so. though. Really? Yeah. My company uh, did, all, got, did all the surveys for their alcohol permit. <laughs> Jeez. And that was... Wait a minute. Number, that was a, years ago. You have to have a survey to have an alcohol permit? Yes, sir. You have to make sure you're not close to a school not or a start church. talking about alcohol permits again. <laughs> Wait a minute. Please. This is so cool. Yeah, you can't be close to a school or a church or... Uh, <laughs> or downhill. Uh, any, anywhere, uh, <laughs> another place that sells alcohol. Or, Are you uh, serious? Or a rehabilitation center. There well, are with minimum, only certain locations. <laughs> that would anywhere. Be there are minimum distance requirements that vary city <laughs> by city or county by county. <laughs> That's freaking crazy, man. Oh, wow. I, <laughs> you can't, you know, they can't, they can only have like a four degree slope because they don't want everybody falling down. That's right. Down. Nobody falling down, <laughs> busting their ass. I can't, I can't get to my car. <laughs> I can't get to my, and you know, I know there's studies that have been done on these new shoes that women wear. And and what angle of attack on a wet grassy slope and a mini skirt? I digress. Never mind. Um, it's guns and gadgets. Uh, yeah, probably should. It could be girls' guns and gadgets. No. Uh, yeah, we, too many G's. Well, yeah, we also We're got the video. Yeah, we got the video up there. It's already talking about God, guns and gadgets. So, did y'all uh, y'all have a chance to look at that video? It came out today from uh, I, you know why do I have so much trouble saying this? Fox and Friends. And it's not Megan Kelly. It's some other hot blonde in a blue dress. Which do you want me to go ahead and play it? Works for me. Yeah, go ahead and play it. Why not? Will they be able to hear it? Yeah, I just gotta. Yeah, okay, you gotta. It. Yeah, you gotta run over there. Yeah. You right? You running? Run, run. If you're not watching on YouTube, it's always fun. And here we go. Here we are. Alabama Church is armed with God and guns. The Rocky Mount Methodist Church turning an empty lot into a shooting range for their cool. parishioners. It was originally meant to teach churchgoers firearm safety, but it's now attracting outsiders. This is an opportunity for us to reach out to others in the name of Jesus Christ in a setting that is completely unique, even odd by some people's standards. But who's to say that church can't happen right here? The local police department there in Alabama also uses the range for training. And from what I understand, they've changed the armbands now, too, at that church to what would Jesus use? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Reach out and touch nine, somebody's soul. Nine millimeter 40 cowards. <laughs> no, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not driving home. <laughs> yeah, please don't. All right. Other news. We're just, we're just trying to get caught up, get a little warmed up, folks. Uh, you know, we are... Uh, uh, 
McLovin and I were on the radio earlier today, but uh, where this gives us Xander a chance to to warm up on the radio, we talk about complete utter nonsense, yep. as well as, um, you know, <laughs> you were sleeping hey, today. today you I know. need. I Everybody need my gets a nap. Sleep. I'm in here jamming. I was having a good time. Yeah, just because you don't sleep doesn't mean. Yeah, it's kind of weird that I'm the weird one. It's it's a weird it's a weird time in my life. It's a weird chapter. <laughs> Deep Thoughts by Military Mike. Tell me more. Mike. You guys vaping all over the place. Okay. Uh, hey, uh, my favorite antichrist, uh, Hillary. Boy, she's uh, a... <laughs> Who, who's your favorite antichrist? Yeah. Oh, that woman. So, you, know, you see what the latest news there is. It's just... I have no clue. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, this woman just continuously gets away with everything. Talk about guns. This is the reason why I carry a gun. I <sighs> I don't know that she's going to get away with anything, ultimately. You, you think she, this one catches up to her? It, it has to. I mean, there's two... She gave, she gave a server to a, a basically nickel and dime company with no... Um, security clearance whatsoever. An email server with you know top secret information on yeah. it, and just hands it over to a, a, a tiny little company that well, apparently has ties to the DNC. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah. Now here's something that was also cool that I heard uh, Rush talking about was apparently it was backed up. Okay, it, it's a it's a like an offsite server. Mm -hmm. Uh, this kind of blends into gadgets, right? Uh, so somebody this important would have a server, but then they would also have a, an offsite server where everything was immediately backed up to. And then from what I understand, for their purposes, they have an additional offsite server oh. that backs up kind of like the cloud, but not really. A cloud, but kind of like a vapor cloud. <laughs> you know, it, it smells of pineapple and butt. Because the, the the whole thing about this is now what? Okay, the server company that she was using, do they have a top secret clearance? No, and hmm. I and I haven't heard um, about the offsite, you yeah. know, the the cloud backups. Um, she, I know she was hosting her own server initially, which is, which yeah. is a, you know that's there's no harm in that if well, you're not doing government work. Right, 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 right. Yeah. From what I understand, though, when she left government service, that was when she supposedly moved her hosting to this third party company, wiped her server completely, um, but supposedly, <laughs> supposedly, they transferred her data to their 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 own servers, their cloud yeah, storage, their so backup, to speak. Yeah. So, and they have no DOD um, clearance, clearance or whatsoever. Yeah. And if that secret, if, if top secret information is on that server, that's a national security violation. I, you know, I'm just thoroughly. I, I honestly believe on... she's going down. I, I know she what? will not be the Democratic nominee. And, and I, I don't think she'll ever go to jail because obviously, you know, we don't put executive the, privilege. Yeah. We, we don't know. put, you know, the politicians in jail very often, but um, <laughs> dang it, I, 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 what's I, wrong with this country? I, I believe it's the end of her political career. Period. Well, I know that uh, I get an unsettling feeling when I think about General Petraeus and his old girlfriend. I mean, that wasn't cool. Uh -uh. Uh, and then you know, you hear about all you know uh, the guy with the WikiLeaks, Snowden, yeah. and all this, and you know, yeah. it just this double or triple set of books, you know, for people. Hey, top secret stuff is top secret. There's a reason why it's top secret. We yeah. had we had foreign disclosure stuff in, you know, in combat zones that literally we wouldn't even release to British. And you know, geez, I don't I don't think there's a stronger ally than Britain that goes along with us. So uh to know that she was Secretary of State and she was traveling around. And from what I understand, you know, when she left the office of Secretary of State, she was supposed to turn everything over. You, you don't get to keep memoirs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's supposed to be government data. Yeah. And uh, Makes sense, it's right? supposed to be, you know, subject to Freedom of Information Act. and If, um, if not classified. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and if she's just wiping data, you know. Cool, cool. Her and Bill, man. Yeah, who knows what's going to happen? Yeah. But you know, you got you got Chelsea Manning and Ed Snowden, both. I think, I, I personally think they're you know brave 
the Patriots. The Patriots doing what they did. Mm. Yet uh, Chelsea Manning, she's in jail, and Ed Snowden has a bounty on his head. And I've I've heard politicians calling for the death penalty for that kid. Yeah, he's a uh, excommunicated. Her, yeah. Whereas you know? Hillary, they want to make her president. Yeah, make her president. <laughs> it's a good idea. I'm probably going to die soon, so you'll have to deal with it. Thanks. So, no problem. I'm here for you. Now, how about my boy with the funny hair? I I tell you what, I got a little I got a little bromance going with Trump, man. Come on, I do. I you know why I like it today? Today I read something that really made a lot of sense to me. Republicans hate him, Democrats hate him, mm -hmm. but Americans love him. I mean, come on. Uh, uh, God. <laughs> Thoughts. Uh, oh, say. talk amongst yourselves. Yeah. <clears throat> so you don't like Trump, huh? I'm sorry. I think I, you know, Trump is. Uh, You're an illegal. Obvious, obviously, a good, uh, great businessman, right? <laughs> he's he's the farthest thing from a statesman I can ever imagine. He's we can, Republicans cannot get an ele get elected with a bigoted misogynist. Gesundheit. They're not going to get us elected. Oh. If 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 uh, if the if he is our nominee, if uh -huh. the American people it's gonna actually happen. pick him as the it's nominee, be, yeah. they just handed the election to Democrats. No, we need we need the women vote. We need the Latino vote. We need as much well, of the black vote as we can possibly get, and we need our core. We need our base. We're not we're not going to get that with Donald Trump. No one is going to vote for Donald Trump except for right wing, you know, zealots. Go ahead. Yeah, Go zealots. Ahead. Zed, basically. I, can, I can hear it. I can hear the Z on your lips. That that's his base. I um, I disagree. I think uh, most women in business and most women that are looking. You know, trying to make the grocery money last all week. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to vote for him. They won't tell nobody, <laughs> but they'll vote <laughs> for him. And then uh, I think the Latinos that are here legally, I think they back him. I think they're perfectly okay with it because they know what's going on with the other ones. And it's it's given them a bad name and it's draining. Now that they're the second largest retail, you know, demographic, they see what what's happening. And, and man, who, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, my my computer's jumping around here. I'm, uh, you know, Sicilian, and at no point do I like to. I know I just don't like hearing about the mafia and stuff like that. You know, it it wasn't my my generation, so I don't know. I don't think the Hispanics are uh, the the ones that are here legally. Now there's going to be that whole daddy came here illegally. I'm legal. What's going to happen? I don't know. I'm a, I'm of the mind that Latinos should traditionally be Republicans. You know, they no, they are. They're they they um their family values mirror, you know, they're they're Christian Catholic people. Oh, and yeah. uh rightfully they should vote Republican. And I, I think the immigration issue is what keeps them from voting Republican. Really? I'd love to see a Rubio Fiorina ticket is what I'd like to see. Jeez. Marco Rubio, Carly Fiorina. That's oh, what man. I'd like to see. You're legal, right? No, I'm legal. <laughs> yeah. I have a green I have a green card. I can hold it up to that damn camera. <laughs> yeah, but can it focus on it? <laughs> no. It's all smeared up. I know what's going on. And uh Jacob, uh, he just chimed in, so all I can say is shut up, Jacob. Um, so yeah, I don't care if you tuned in. Me. My my generation seems to be fond of uh Bernie Sanders. Get out of here. Nobody's fond of Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders doesn't even like Bernie Sanders. You know what? I, I, here it comes. No. <laughs> I'm not I'm I'm not left wing. I'm not a, a Democrat. I'm not a liberal, mm -hmm. you know, socialist or anything like that. Dingo. But uh <laughs> I'll tell you one thing I like about Bernie Sanders is he's true to himself. Yeah. He's he's never he's not like you know, Donald Trump is Republican when he wants to be, he's Democrat when he wants to be. He's he's just like Bloomberg, which is why they're good friends, by the way. Yeah, you know he's it's exactly the same as Mike Bloomberg. Um, Bernie Sanders, he knows what he is and he sticks with it. And no, and you, know, you, you got to respect the man for that. We gotta yeah. hit. We gotta hit a break. Okay, hit a break. Pay the bills. Hit a, hey, we're gonna go take a break and pay some bills, and we'll be back. And when we come back, we're gonna talk about how. Bernie Sanders is a oh he's a geriatric he's a, git, <laughs> but but right, he's wait, true to we, himself. We gotta go. We gotta go. Go McLovin, hit the commercial. <laughs> we'll be right back, folks. <laughs> 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 
see the way they do these commercials is they actually are like running it in the background mm -hmm. so when the time comes up we gotta oh so they're going yeah, regardless of what we're doing it's like going in the background it'll it'll That's shut funny. us down so we can either look stupid or we can look stupid. I look stupid because I didn't. I wasn't paying attention. Oh well, that's just your part of the job. But no, please chime in and go. My generation likes Bernie Sanders. I I I number He's of my a friends. Freaking psychopath, man. Number of my younger friends like Bernie. Really? Oh yeah, very much so. God, he's a freaking. Yeah, he head. appeals. A, he he appeals to the younger generation. Yeah. I don't know why, because he's so fucking old. You want to know why? Because he's saying that he'll make four year colleges tuition free like well i mean he <laughs> won't he, he can say that but it's not going to happen he says Maybe, that it, i i've Loud heard enough. uh i've heard yeah, them float the uh i've heard them float the idea of uh two-year community college being uh being free here's my problem with that is um no one will go to four years well no it's it's not that necessarily there would be so much competition then to get in right because there's not infinite places right. you know the, the number of placements are very limited so they would either have to severely increase the entry requirements and the standards or you end up with the government deciding who can and cannot go to college that's, and that's the worst case scenario that's a lot like russia yeah that's worst case scenario right there hey don't let me forget we gotta do a uh, a birthday prank on trevor You'll write. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, the taco in front. Of well, I couldn't tell. Look, when y'all ain't using that, pull that down. Just penetrate the taco. What is it, wrong with this floppy when thing? It's, when it's white like this, it makes this look Den dark. Denise was playing with it today. <laughs> Yeah, it was just I was trying to get it adjusted and it uh, kept spinning. Okay, watch. Now Not I fix it. I think. Remember, I always bitch about how I can't how the volume on the uh, video always gets weird because it's something that I can't control. So go to control panel. It actually evened out, but y'all watch every day. This this thing does its own thing. So when the recording, so see under sound, under recording. Hit recording. Um, scroll down. That's our microphone, the USB. Then you click it, and then go to level. See where it says 38? It's supposed to be four and five. So what was happening was <laughs> one minute y'all were talking, and Mike sounded fine, and then one minute it sounded like just. just but it's not anybody's fault. It's because the computer keeps adjusting. What's Whatever that was, fault? it jumped back up to 16. <laughs> Yo, it did jump back up. See, the problem is Google Hangout is considered a phone call. Mm -hmm. This all Windows program has a thing saying it self-adjusts by 80% or whatever because it's still considered a phone call. We can't, I can't make it stop. I've gone to every Google and Yahoo search, and people all say, listen, that you can't stop it. They've all tried all their other ways. Unless I can find somebody that Break through windows. Ooh. Hey y'all! Let's not say that live. <laughs> I know kung fu. <laughs> so anyway, everything's going good. I watched you two seconds ago over the Donald Trump. I was like, here we go. <laughs> 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 Freaking Bernie Sanders, man. Okay, I just God, could you imagine if he was really the president? Listen, I I want if he. I think we have a lot more chance against Bernie <sighs> than uh, than Hillary. So I pray, I think, I think I, I'm right praying Hillary, he's I their nominee. Oh, Hillary. I can't see, like Duh. you just said, though, even though she should be arrested, they'll never arrest her. No. But no, her Amy, husband. she doesn't need to have no political. They didn't arrest yeah. her. I mean, there, there was a case. There was a case to lock her husband up. There was a case to lock W up. Oh, yeah. But we don't, we don't put we don't people like, well, we certainly don't put ex-presidents in jail. Right. And we shouldn't. Well, and, because, that, and, and even if we did. Do you know what the, the next president will just pardon them anyway. Right. Well, so even if she was convicted, she'd get a pardon. What what if what if we went 30. to lock her up and she flipped and uh, she uh -huh. told everybody secrets? Yeah. Say so bite me. And plus, what if she has secrets on people and blackmail us? I don't think uh well, I mean the, the, the bigger concern is you know, let's let's assume her server was uh accessed. What secrets do people then have on her? That you know they what? can blackmail her with 
And do we want somebody like that as president? So let her get in office and her be blackmailed. Exactly. I think we should tell this lie. I think I'm going to say that Hillary Clinton apparently has fled the country. <laughs> All right, 25 seconds. Okay, I'll go back. <laughs> Breaking news. Breaking news. Make it sound like serious. <laughs> Who's watching on YouTube? Do we know? No, hell no. Okay. Weirdos like Barry Smallwood telling me to put a scoozy on my beer. Drown G. Do we ever come back from commercial or is just do we just koozies are communist, by the way? I, it sounds like it. Ready? Ah, uh, yeah. Five, right. four, three, two. <laughs> uh, caught me right in a belch. <laughs> yeah, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still belching. Oh, uh, hey, this goes out to uh, Barry Smallwood. Um, no, I won't put a scoozy on my beer. Brrr, there's the belch I was trying to get out. Well, uh, while we're at break, um, breaking news. Some breaking news came out for everyone. Yeah. Uh, apparently, Hillary Clinton has admitted her guilt by leaving the country. So, uh, reporting here first from Just for Fun Radio. My name is Tyler, and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Hillary has uh, jokes on you. I changed my name legally to McLovin. <laughs> so, uh, yep, uh, Hillary has. Hey, uh, Hillary! Hillary for president! Hillary for president! 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 What's you, a president? Are you a child? And Y'all have that five-year-old call into the I, studio, just break in. Did do is that he, he can do that? He has the ability. Yeah, he can. You have to watch him because he was over there playing with stuff, too. So there's no telling what will happen. That was our illustrious leader calling in and saying Hillary is president. Which, uh, just so you know, Scotty, if you're listening, Hillary Clinton said that there was going to be taxation on all radio station, uh, internet radio stations. So there. Yeah. Yeah. I made that up, too. <laughs> you actually kind of didn't make that up. <laughs> How so? With there's internet. already there's already yeah. ASCAP fees and, and uh, internet uh, sales. Yeah, they're not they're not getting around that about that internet retail sales, buddy. Uh, yeah, they're gonna get you for taxes on that stuff, retail taxes. So, uh, moving right along, let's do the military mic thing. Did you hear about this one? TJ Scotty said, "F her." <laughs> <laughs> did you hear it? Did you hear about this one? Two girls walk into a bar. And joined Ranger School. <laughs> yeah, yep. I heard it. No one cares. Yeah, nobody cares. <laughs> uh, so there are now two women that are graduates of the United States Army Airborne Ranger School. Yeah, it's we have our call. Even, we, we got a caller. Call we got a caller. All right, everybody, stand back. We don't know how big this thing's going to get. Hello, caller. Welcome to Just for Fun Radio. And it's. I think Joe Biden needs to to win, and Hillary needs to be her his. His or her, or whatever he is. Wait, sir, you're uh, going to have to make a decision. Vice pres <laughs> sir, put your vice beer down. President. <laughs> vice president. Sir, That's what I think. We only have one vice president. <laughs> 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 sir, have you been drinking? Oh, uh, no, but uh, hold on. I think the bottle just <laughs> fell over. Hang on. Uh, okay, I got to get back to this. It's falling over in That's the right. table. That's alcohol abuse, sir. B bye. Bye. Does that scare anybody else? Who was that? <laughs> I don't know. Isn't okay. that, isn't that the uh, isn't that the young kid that calls in to the morning show? That's no, not, no, no, no. He's he's really that way. <laughs> that was somebody acting that way. Oh well. Oh, Oops. DJ Scotty said Secret Service. Oh, oh yeah. Well, who cares? It's so yeah. Help. Anyway, apparently the class started with three hundred eighty-one men and nineteen women. And uh, two women graduated and, what, 30-something guys, 39 men? And that sounds about right. I mean, it's it, Ranger School is not easy now. I mean, uh, I, I wonder, do you think they... 94 men, sorry. Do you think they changed the standards a little bit? No, I mean, cause women no absolutely have a, not. Well, women have a different PT, uh, physical training standard in the military anyways, but then you've got the Ranger... According, according yeah, to this, so, according to CNN, they they went through the exact same training. Yeah, so that's I mean they went through the same training. So well now, uh, yeah, you so know they have graduated, and, but they're not going to be able to do the same jobs. They're not allowed to join the seventy fifth. Wow. You so know, they're for just some reason walk, they're just going to walk around with a ranger tag. I think so. 
Wow. If for now, anyway, the, now the military brass say they're looking into it. And like I said to you before the show, if you want to look into it, if you want to find out what <laughs> women in the military can do, go talk to Israel. They'll tell you exactly what That's women right. in the military can do, and it's any damn thing they want That's to do. That's right. And let me tell you something. The idea of the Israeli Defense Force used females predominantly for firearms instructors and martial arts instructors. They will beat you and then shoot you yeah, or shoot at you. And when you get tired, beat you down. Uh, some of the, and, and you know what, there are some beautiful and, uh, they, well, I guess women get insulted by that. You know, some do, some do. <laughs> women get insulted. You're beautiful. Oh, you're a son of a, don't talk to me like that. Um, now I saw some pictures of, the, I don't think women in the, the military are that <laughs> sensitive. If you've ever seen nudes for troops, you'd know they're not that sensitive. Well, uh, Xander, I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't gone to that website <laughs> <laughs> and if you'd like to post it on Facebook, that'll be okay with me. Uh, but, uh, no, I have, uh, some friends, you know, that I've served with and, uh, there's some are uh, absolutely beautiful, you know, and then there's some that, yeah, they, they look like McLovin over here. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. That's me yeah. with the facial hair. You know, I, I, I'm one of, I'm just one of those people that thinks they're as capable as anybody else physically. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll put it this way. I can't think of a job they couldn't do in the military. Uh, they have a little trouble peeing standing up. Well, that's not necessarily a job, though, is it? Uh, it is for me. <laughs> 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 yeah, just think about those tacos there, McLevin. So, uh, yeah, you know, if they can't join the 75th, now, I hadn't read that, so that does change things. For those of you that don't know, the 75th Regiment, the Infantry Regiment, is the basically the regiment for the Rangers. There's uh, one through four. Uh, I know the uh, 4th Ranger Battalion opened up last and gosh, 84, 83, 86. No, it wasn't 86. It was before that because I was in flight school in 86. So it had to be probably about 84, 85 time frame. But uh, hey, if you've never been down to Fort Benning, um, there will be a, uh, there's a young lady that we have. Her name is Ambrosia and she'll be calling in um, hopefully later on this evening. She's an avid shooter. She's down there at Fort Benning, and she does uh, she does a lot of work for the veterans, uh, which is just amazingly cool. I talked to two women today, uh, Alice and uh, Ambrosia, and and they both, out of the goodness of their heart, help combat uh, disabled vets, which is major cool. Uh, so we'll be getting a, a woman's point of view on her once we start talking about guns, and being that it's guns and gadgets, we'll eventually have to get to that. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, I'd, I'd like to get her... Uh opinion on that not that you know these girls not being able to go into the 75th it, it strikes me they're just going to be you know return to unit and they'll have a ranger tag and 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 she's so, there which, which would be purely symbolic in that case yeah so you know uh she's she's down there too so i'm sure she's got the scuttle you know on what's really going on dead because the guys i know i'm just going to be honest and it's not me don't yell at me the guys i know are going to go yeah 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 but when they're back in their units and they're back with their buddies, it's going to be, oh, dude, we had to go through school with it. Now I'm going to have to remember Ranger School is we had to carry that chick stuff, you know. <laughs> but, uh, hey, but you know, uh, that's that's what it is, and that's what guys do in the military. Sorry. I know that uh, I know a couple of WMs, women Marines yep. in the, the Marine Corps, and, yeah, Marine Corps is tough. And uh, I tell you what, they're badasses. They are badasses. They can shoot. They can shoot, move, and communicate. Hey, train, and trained is trained. Trained is trained, and uh, I'm all about it. We don't dig foxholes anymore. You know, that's what they used to always say. That's they right. want women in foxholes. Yeah. And uh, we don't dig foxholes no more. So, what do you, what do you dig? Uh, we don't. Well, I dig the Zeppelin and the Stones. I'm really into that classic rock. But uh, now, now we pretty much ride around in armored vehicles and try to not blow up people's stuff because they even in combat zone they complain can you imagine oh yeah <laughs> how does that work yeah you're kicking the door you'll get the bill <laughs> <laughs> yeah that brings a whole new meaning to collateral damage um next topic uh we were talking about the uh israeli, easy the israeli woman easy how yeah. do you feel about the iran deal oh uh let me tell you something about that iran deal i do know <laughs> no, no. no. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna cut to the chase on this one. No, 
Yeah, I I love that. Uh, <laughs> well, the, I was saying to Mike, the first the the deal was supposed to first be agreed upon on my birthday last year, November twenty fourth, right. twenty fourteen, and um, I said at the time they're not they're not gonna. It, I I don't think they'll even get a deal. So still to this day, I don't think we'll ratify this deal. Were the conditions um, different? On that one, as opposed uh, uh, to the ones who Yeah, well, when they started the negotiations, it would have been a, a good deal. It would have been good for America. So what are, And that's why the administration said, we're not going to accept a bad deal just for the sake of having a deal. Look what they did. What are the parameters <laughs> of the deal? Well, now, the, the, now the parameters are um, uh, Iran continue with their nuclear development. Okay. They, or, they don't have to submit to any inspections whatsoever. Uh, hell no. Um, and it's a, uh, and that's only for, we start lifting sanctions immediately. We give them a shit ton of cash and, uh, in 10 years it all goes away and they're free to do whatever they want. Why? Because that's the deal. This administration. And what are we brokered. gaining? What are we gaining out of this? Uh, an unstable Middle East. Oh, fine. <laughs> as as opposed to the stable Middle so, East, so the a more unstable <laughs> so the Middle East. All over. Yeah. Well, we're, we're, we're gaining an environment where Israel's just going to go to war. Uh, well, that's the big thing is what we're actually getting from it is that a promise mm -hmm, from Iran that they will not develop a nuclear weapon. You see what I'm saying? Because right now they're really knocking at the door of using whatever means they have against the Israelis. And being that we're supposed to be allies with the Israelis, hopefully we will be next administration. Um, that's not a good idea. Plus, we've tried this before with Iran. We have given them, you know, leaps and, and bounds of of rope, and they always hang themselves. They always do. I mean, there were there were UN inspectors back in the '80s that would literally show up to do the inspection, and they wouldn't let them through the doors. I mean, yeah. I mean, the day, the day they announced this deal, the Ayatollah was on Twitter screaming <laughs> death, death to, to America. America. So, you know. <laughs> well, you saw what Obama said. He said when they're saying death to America, they don't really mean death to America. Yeah. Go ahead, everybody. Everybody well, look at the YouTube camera real quick and go. Huh? <laughs> that was a. What, it, what would they mean then? Well, you fell for that one. Because, yeah, that's exactly what they mean. And the president was trying to blow vapor up our butts. Ah! Instead of smoke up our ass, I said vapor up our butts. See how hip I am? I'm 2016, baby. I don't care what you say. <laughs> uh, Please stop. I'm going to get sick. Yeah. Okay. So we've already lifted the sanctions, right? Part, parts of them have already been lifted. Uh, and, I do not know. And I, they said I don't money. Think, I don't think we can until Congress uh, ratified. Uh, uh, yeah, I thought I could have sworn I heard that they parts of it was already taking place and money through the use, you know, through purchasing of, uh, you know, here we are. We're going to buy a bunch of crap from them. Well, I imagine um, if he's if he's already doing that, he's kind of overstepping his bands again, because as far as I understand, Congress has to ratify that deal. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. They're they're only supposed to keep like three hundred kilograms of the stuff around, you know, for ten. Well, they only have to years, have. So. The, I I think we wanted to cut the initially. We wanted to cut them back to two thousand centrifuges, and now they're sticking with ten thousand. Um, I I I don't know the exact number. <laughs> no, so it's, you you're serious. It's, it's but basically, uh, the, Iran got the sweet end of the deal, big time, and yeah. uh, Israel got hosed. And uh, you know, that's and they're not happy about that. No, would you be? Uh, I'm not happy about it anyway, and I'm not from, yeah. Iran, or from uh, Israel. So, I mean, here's what's going to happen, too, is when they don't, and they will uh, not comply with these these simple things that they have to, um, we're going to we're going to go back in time man. it's going to be like the land that uh, or the yeah, the land that time lost <laughs> or time that land lost or however you say it, because uh, these people don't care. They're just, I mean, that guy over there, what's his name, Abijan or Abijan, the, who the the yeah. president, not the, the religious head. Right. He just, I mean, he will broker a deal anywhere, anything, anything possible. I mean, he was in Afghanistan half a dozen times right. trying to broker deals when that was all falling apart right. because uh, Afghanistan is is landlocked. And so Pakistan was dropping the ball, bringing our uh, storage containers in. So he was like, I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah. So 
Got about five minutes. Yep. Well, we could probably milk this for another five minutes. I'm yeah. sure. So I, I have to start I, a know, new topic. I um, I. It's it's tough with Iran because I think the people of Iran are. Um, I, my opinion of of Iran as a nation has changed a lot over the years, and I think well, I the, think the, what do you mean? I, well, I think the actual the people of Iran. Uh -huh. I think they're they're very much akin to Americans, um, and I think as a whole, if if they were able to uh, get out from under the the hand, under the tyranny of the um, Ayatollah. You think so? Yeah, I, I think Iran would be a much friendlier nation. Hmm. I beg to differ. Really? Yeah. But you know what? There is one country. Iran is one country to me that is still 100%, uh, you know, 99.9, whatever you want to do, but uh, is still, they are Islamic zealots. And they their form of government is based on sheer law i mean it's man i just i can see these video clips of hundreds of thousands of people out there just cheering and how going come, wild how come the pr the prisoners the four pr or is it four is it four prisoners yes they how were come not. that wasn't part of the deal because john Kerry and president obama said that that would make the deal more complex and they didn't want to make it any more difficult. Yeah, it's four people. We'll pick them up. <laughs> we'll pick them it, up. It I'll a, drive over there if you want me to. We'll send somebody for them. <laughs> it, it was a bad deal. What? Yes, it's a bad deal from from head to toe, front to back, side to side, uh, from the front of the centrifuge to the back of the centrifuge. It's a bad deal for us. Yeah. Um, how do those four folks feel? You know, geez. I would think if I was uh, if I was their captor, I'd be rubbing their faces and I go, your country doesn't care. Your country's going to lift sanctions. Your country's going to give us billions of dollars of taxpayers' money. It's, and, it's oh. well, listen, when you you think about what we gave up to bring back a deserter, <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, we released we released terrorists and uh, to bring back uh, Bergdahl. Yep. And we do we don't put any conditions on bringing back four hostages. In innocent. Yeah. Well, and and how many of the five that were released? I think two of them have already been killed. As they returned to the battlefield, two of them had already been killed now, and two of the other ones are, you know, right back basically in their positions. Yeah. So, uh, I, it was a bad deal. Yeah. Simple as that. Do do this for a second though. How many, How long we got till the break? About two minutes. About two minutes. Yeah. Uh, think about this for a second. Let this let this resonate in your head. Uh, why does it seem so? dumb to us at this level why why does it seem like it's a completely asinine thought or an Probably asinine we don't know the whole it's think, story i mean what what could possibly be the rest of the story that would can make this a good story? what would you know? what would stop what, what, would what could they, seriously stop our secretary of state saying no you have to release these hostages yeah. you know what i think happened he walked away from the table and one of his aides went you didn't say nothing about the four hostages yeah and maybe. he goes Oops. Oh, you're right. A bit late. That's what I think happened. And that's just because that's what people do. Come I, I think they bent over just to get a deal. Yep. I, I think it, you know, he's he's coming into at the end of his of his presidency. He wants some kind of legacy. Uh, <laughs> some kind one. of legacy in the Middle East. Thank you, uh, legacy. <laughs> and, yeah. and they did exactly what they said they would not do, which is take a bad deal. <laughs> get it? Stanky legs. Yeah. Thank you, legacy. God, tell me that commercial is close. Got a minute. <laughs> Woo so, yeah, just joking around with that one. But uh, I imagine the people in, in Iran are pretty damn ecstatic about the fact that uh, they're going to be getting. They'll get food. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, I mean, they don't have to drink dirty water. I mean, the infrastructure is going to be beefed up, everything. So, yep. yep, I burped. It's my show. I can do it. We're going to go ahead and go to a break now. <sighs> You're welcome. Saved by the commercial. Actually, I'm just going to go. Let's talk forward. about guns when we get back. You know what? Somebody said that was the name of the show. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. Guns? 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 We yeah. good? Yeah, guns. guns. Guns when we come back. And I'll be quiet for a while. Guns. <laughs> we're going to talk about, we're going to, every week, we're going to, we're going to mention can chime safety. In. You can ask, uh, you can ask the, uh, <laughs> the questions. questions. You can ask the questions that callers should be asking, <laughs> yeah. but don't call in. Because they're scared. Yeah, that'd be weird if you called in because you're like right here. All right, we got to go to uh, a commercial. 
Thank you. Let's do a commercial. All right. We'll be right back, folks. Commercial. You're welcome to the That's it. My last hot day. Sure. Yeah, I mean, if you look Fatty. at if you look at the protests in Iran and you look at the uh, progressive movements picking up in Iran, I don't know. I think I think they're moving. They're moving to a point where they're going to be very much aligned. I think with the American people. Really? Yeah, I, it's their government that's uh, there. Well, there, there will be the, coup status. N- no, it won't be. A coup. Well, I mean, they're the, like, mil- the uh, military aren't going to. You know, the military run things. It, it, the, I think the people will I mean, um, revolt. rise up and revolt. Yeah, I really I do. I, mean, I think they're sick of it. I think they've had enough. I, I think it'd probably be uh, in their best interest to do so. But if they do that, they've still got to deal with the religious aspect of it. You know? Yeah, they're still. They do. I mean, they're they're primarily Shia. Their, their their government is just their government is just a a, a form of. You know what? The British government were a form of religious zealots as well, right? Yeah, man. And they got overthrown. <laughs> uh, and you we're guys, due for one. It's a lot easier than their asses. It wasn't genocide. You guys. Listen to him. Nixie's, well, I mean, it was. You know, I wasn't Nixie, here. Nixie's going <laughs> to... I wasn't here to take, take care of that. Nixie, Nixie's going to complain about freaking slavery. Yeah, hey, listen. <laughs> I'm all, I'm easy, all easy. No, it's... I'm all about the good revolution. <laughs> I okay. always say, we're gonna 4th end. of July... You I thought he was about to say, I'm all about slavery. Fourth of July, you guys should be at burning my flag. Uh, Union Jack, right? Not really. Country's gone to hell. Going to hell in a handbasket. Shut up. Got a guy playing. Uh, well, he was messed up now. But Battlefield Four with. And um. You got a PS4? Three. They got a Battlefield Four for PS3. I didn't know that. That was only for the four. Yeah. I was actually one of the first people to buy a game when it came out. Because you have no friends. I'm pretty sure I have Battlefield 4 on the PS3. Mine doesn't work anymore. I don't know if mine works after I haven't unpacked it since the house was flooded two years ago. So I know my 3D TV stopped working. I had the Sony PlayStation 3D tele- the, the, the 3D TV that they made for the PlayStation. Oh, yeah. Fantastic little thing. But uh, after the flood came back, plugged that in, it didn't work. So I'm going to assume the PlayStation doesn't work as well. Got about a minute. All right. We said we were going to let's go over uh, oh. safety again. I thought we were doing just, uh, just whiz through the four rules quick, and then we'll go into um, carrying. And the belt and everything. What are I we did. doing the AK debate? That'll, that'll come. Yeah. I'm just going to go over a, a, a couple of things that I think are important if you conceal carry. See, one, one of the things about safety, just so you know, one of the things about safety is that it should be redundant. It should be, no, it should be over second over, nature. Over and 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 over For any of my children that are listening, herpaderp. Oh, derka derka. Derka derka derka. Derka derka derka. Have uh, have you ever seen that movie, Team America? Uh, yes. And uh, is it obviously one of your favorites? Mm, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> it's it was a it was a reasonable All right, we're live film. In five, four, three, two. Welcome to Wayne's World. That doesn't make any sense. We're gonna do Scotty's World in the morning, but. Yeah, in the morning, we just basically make it here to the morning show. Um, That's all we do. So, yeah, pretty much. We get yelled at a lot. Yeah. Um, and we're not allowed to come in and say Durka Durka by anymore. The, by the czar. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the, the, p- 
Hulip Barrel. Oh, Durga Durga Jihad. Yeah. Durga Durga. We can say it on my show, though, can't yeah, we? Yeah, we can. Durga Durga Jihad Muhammad. So, <laughs> uh, we're back. Hey, it's Military Mike with Guns and Gadgets. We've got Xander. Uh, he's voting for Bernie Sanders, and uh, he, you know, he wants Iran to pass the deal. Uh, then we got McLovin, who's uh, barely here. Barely here. Barely here, Michael. Uh, just just basically trying to stay awake. He's got a huge mess going over here. Happy uh, to be alive here. He has eaten, oh gosh, I don't know, nine, maybe ten tacos. Uh, Five, if, if you haven't seen, uh, you obviously didn't know McLovin six months ago, but he's gained 50 pounds. Um, so pounds. if anybody hasn't seen him in a while, he's, he's a fat ass. Um, <laughs> let's just cut to the coming, chase on that coming one. From you. Yeah. I, obviously I'm experienced in this good try. It's not like I gained weight overnight fatty. Um, those shirts that you're wearing though, they do come in other sizes than medium women's, uh, Xander, what do you think we talk about some guns and what's the first thing we should always talk about when we talk about guns, gun safety, gun safety, baby. We'll All right, through what, the uh, go through the four rules real quick, and then we'll move on to something else. I'll do the first one. Treat every firearm as if it's loaded. You know what? If you do that, you'll never have a negligent discharge, never have a, a misfire. You'll never shoot anybody that you weren't aiming at. Mm -hmm. Got it? Number two. Number two, never point your firearm at anything you are not willing to destroy. Cool beans or kill. Because <laughs> you can destroy like a can or something, but you can't kill it. Yeah, just be willing to destroy it. Just and depending on how well you shoot, just so we can kill stuff. <laughs> okay. Number three. Number three. Tell them what they want. Uh, always be sure of your target and what's beyond it. Hey, uh, I tell you what, I'm a, I'm a nine millimeter kind of guy, and those rounds have a tendency to cut right through. And uh, you definitely have to be looking. You definitely situational awareness. Be be aware of what's around you. Absolutely. Be aware of what's behind yep. your target. And uh, finally, keep your finger off of the trigger until you're on target and ready to shoot. And uh, you know, for beginners, it's good. And we talked about it a little we bit did. more advanced. Yeah. You kind of uh, you know you know when to do it, when not. To do Absolutely. It. I, I, again, a time constraint. Absolutely. To, and, to, and I take the slack out of the trigger yeah. during my draw stroke, but. I've That's, practiced it yeah. over and over and over. Wouldn't be recommended and wouldn't be trained to a noob. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, McLovin, you got anything you want to add on gun safety? <laughs> um, Always wear a condom. What? Yeah, Dude, I knew I'm that lost on this. <laughs> I don't know guns. That's all right. Here in a few minutes, we're talking about vaping. You guys got me. All right. Hey, uh, from what I understand, when we were talking earlier this week or late last week or over the weekend... <laughs> Uh, you brought up a great point, and you know what? Today I had a problem with it. I was wearing my weapon uh, when we went out to lunch. This is not the belt that I normally wear with my uh, holster, and basically it was folded over and dragging the ground a couple times. Yeah, so, uh, yeah uh, it's, I, I read an article online this week, and it was uh, some common mistakes people make when they conceal carry. One of them, one of the issues was a, a cheap holster, which obviously, you know, those $10 floppy nylon holsters, piece of junk. <laughs> or the but, old but, leather ones. Yeah, know? but more importantly, a belt, right? Yep. I I've, I use, uh, in fact, I brought one in. I, if anyone's watching, I was going to do a little show and tell with this thing. Cool. This is a uh, resin impregnated scuba webbing belt from Special Operations Equipment. And the purpose of a gun belt is to hold your gun, not your pants. Yeah. Buy pants that fit. <laughs> and then get a get a belt that supports your uh, your gear. Um, a lot of people go buy a cheap ten twenty dollar belt from Coles. It doesn't support the weight of the gear properly, so they end up cinching that belt down. They're uncomfortable the whole day because of it. When they could just spend you know fifty sixty seventy bucks on a proper gun belt, and it would uh, let me snap this on here real quick, and it will support the weight of the gear for you. Absolutely. Uh, now you know uh, this. This visual thing is not going, <laughs> not going as uh, uh, as, as, as planned. you can tell. The should've, British rarely prepare their I was gear. Say, probably should have prepared one of these earlier. <laughs> but uh, real quick, while you're fighting with that, why y'all lost their revolution? It's one of those. <laughs> it's one of. Shut up. It's one of those. Uh, <laughs> it's, 
the we, lost, we, lost, we lost the, resolu- the uh, revolution because you guys cheated. Hey, and right? and you stand in a line out in the open. You don't climb behind rocks. And we lost the resolution because that's what he was going to yeah, say. Yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> We're just picking, dude. Yeah. Hey, uh, but uh, you know what? There's also a uh, what's called a parachute rigger's belt. And uh, those rigger belts, man, they're awesome. I yeah, this this is um, the the only we got thing. Got a collar. The only thing that's different about this belt is it doesn't have the D loop that a rigger belt has. Yep. All right, go for it. Go for it. Answer it. Hello, yeah. collar. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I actually have a safety question. Oh no. Oh we, no. We, we weren't prepared for safety. No. Do not poke <laughs> holes in your condom. You shouldn't. If you're gonna drive, drink and drive, drive really, really fast. It reduces your exposure time. I understand. I understand. <laughs> All right. So the question would be, and I've had this debated by multiple people. Well, we're the only people that really matter. So go ahead. I understand. I understand. <laughs> well, it's a real safety question. Um, while concealed carrying, and as opposed to, you know, in comparison of concealed carry versus vehicle carry, uh, would it be better to chamber or not chamber? An empty gun is kind of pointless. All right. Chamber uh, around. See that? That's Xander's answer. And my answer is I can rack one just as quick as you can draw. And I, and I was curious. Yep. You know, I, I know in, in a safety aspect, probably also depending on the weapon. But, you know, I, some of my weapons have a very good safety on them uh, where I wouldn't feel uncomfortable leaving <laughs> around in it. Wait, 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 wait. Time out. Time out. Was, time out. Hey, listen, yeah. I, I, I get what he's saying. If, it, if you're, if you're, if I was carrying a high point, I wouldn't put any, I wouldn't put any <laughs> rounds in it. Right. But if I'm, if I'm carrying my Glock or my 1911, <laughs> oh, it's going to be, it's going to be locked and loaded. Right. Uh, hold on yeah. a second there, caller. You said they have good safeties on them. Well, uh, you know what I meant. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I'm asking what what do you feature. consider to be a good safety, one that works? <laughs> I, don't, I mean, seriously, you got pew and then no pew. <laughs> and if and you're pew pew pew, I was about to say if you had an automatic, it's pew pew pew. Um, so what what type of safety do you consider to be a good safety? Well, do you, like for instance, I don't see a, an issue with my XDS. You know, I have an XDS that I don't feel that. Uh, it, it has what I would call a grip safety slash and as well as a trigger safety. So you have to be holding it firmly with the grip as well as on the trigger to be able to pull the trigger. Yeah, it has Thank a... Thank you for b- clarifying. Yeah. You know what he means? Yeah. It has a back strap safety just like the a 1911. Spine, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the spine safety. Yeah. But here's the thing. <laughs> yeah. I love doing this. Uh, shouldn't you be holding the weapon securely anyways? Collar? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I, my my only issue with those grip safeties is if you do, I mean, obviously the the idea is to get a good fighting grip on that pistol oh, before yeah. you draw. Maybe. If if you're under stress in a hurry and you fumble that and you don't get that grip safety pressed down, then then you're struggling. In no fire. Right. Yeah. Well, and and another thing too, when I do draw a weapon, I, I'm generally. I don't have my finger already on the trigger as I'm drawing it. So, you know, I mean, that that's also a sense of, of training yeah. in, in part. So. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, most guns these days are pretty, even, even modern revolvers have uh, hammer blocks and, uh, right. you know, even the 1911, the series 80, 80 1911s now have a uh, firing pin block as well. So c- even carrying cocked and locked with a 1911 is safer today than it is on, than uh, theoretically than it is on my series 70, which has no firing pin block. So I, I trust the gun and I trust myself and I'm sure you do. Like you said, you keep your finger off the trigger and that's your safety. When it all comes down okay. to it, your brain, yeah. your brain and your, Absolutely. Uh, that's, that's pretty much. And, and, too, yeah. and that's why I have no problem carrying a, a ram chambered guns are, I've none of my guns have ever just upped and shot somebody by themselves. I figure, <laughs> I figure you know, I've had two do it for, just in case they open up For a legal case, reasons. just so they <laughs> reopen that case. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, in in serious, uh, you know, if if you got one in the tube and you've got little ones around, or you know, I hate to say it, but uh, there's I have a lot of little ones around, and and generally because uh, I don't, uh, you know, I don't put my my 
grab it to go bag mm -hmm. up on stuff or too high. And there are little ones around. I just, I find the, yeah. I, the way I teach because generally 95% of the people I teach are, are noobs, you know? So uh, yeah, I, I can see that's consideration. Yeah. I don't have to worry about that. I live alone, no kids. And, uh, and I have my guns either on my hip or it's in my safe. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, so you know. it's one of those things uh, in your car. Now, let me ask you a question. Are you uh, are you taking the weapon out of the holster when you sit in the car and put your uh, seatbelt on? Uh, generally, yes. So you leave yeah, your holster on, but you take the weapon out. Correct. Yeah, I'll, I'll actually usually tuck it in beside me. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have a I have a little story about that because I got robbed at gunpoint sitting in the car about um, probably about three four years ago, and uh, I was carrying the way I normally do, four or five o'clock. You know, on the hip, strong side hip, belted into the car. <laughs> learned yep. learned pretty quickly, and I'd, I'd never trained for this scenario. By the way, um, learned pretty quickly. You can't get to your gun fast. Absolutely, in that not position. At all. absolutely. Um, so after that, I took a, a disruptive environments class, and uh, you know, fighting from a vehicle, things like that. And now I in the car, I carry appendix, and it's just easy to get to. And um, I've actually heard more conducive of, uh, to fighting from a vehicle. I've actually heard of people that will, you know what you're talking about, collar, uh, putting it between the seat. Right. Uh, I've actually heard of, of people buying another holster. Yeah, that's true. Having one that stays yep. in the vehicle. Having yeah, one that stays that. in the vehicle and they just, they, they draw their weapon and they put it in, in the holster that's, uh, you know, not mounted, but yeah. obviously stationary. I in the see, um, I see a lot of people buy those, uh, God, what is it? Those, um, it's not Safari. I have a Safari Land uh, level two holster. It's it's another Uncle Mike it's or not, Serpa. It's not Serpa. Serpa. Thank Serpa. you. Mm. I see a lot of people get Serpas and then hard mount them to, um, you know, say the side of the, uh, uh, the uh, glove uh, box or something console like that. or something, mm -hmm. and they'll use right. a uh, they'll use a, a left. You know, if it's on your right side and it's facing towards you, you would actually use a left handed holster. Right. That way, your right. thumb disengages the, uh, the Serpa. yeah instead of your finger mm, for lack um, of better yeah that which is a great option because in a crash it's not going to fly around and you know hit everybody right. or uh so yeah a hard mounted holster in the car is a good idea absolutely yeah i've also seen them where folks will actually uh put, put a specialized strap sometimes have the adjustable strap that'll go from side to side to uh, vertical and uh, they'll strap it onto and around the steering column boot underneath. Yeah, underneath so I've the. Seen uh, that a lot as yeah, well. yeah. I have. Yep, yeah, I've actually seen that too. So that's interesting. Hey, we appreciate you calling in. Are there any other Not safety concerns? Did we answer it? I mean, that's. Yeah, honest. absolutely, absolutely. It's it could go either way, and it probably, like you said, like you guys said, it's kind of like McLovin way. can go either way. Mm. <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah. Lord of mercy. I'm chin. Hi, right, man. We appreciate you calling in. Yeah. What's yes, What's your uh, name? Richard. Richard. Thanks for calling hey. in, brother. Absolutely. You know me. It's little Richard. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> the midget. The midget man. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't no midget. They, they, there's a difference between mid, midget and a dwarf. Come on, man. Yeah. It's called little people. <laughs> <laughs> You're just pissed because you don't. It's you can't right ride to be anything. <laughs> <laughs> you just piss because you can't ride none at Six Flags. Hey, that's right. That's right. You got to be this tall. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Well, we just had right. somebody. Uh, thanks. Hey, we appreciate you calling in, man. You got it. All right. Uh, just had somebody uh, on Facebook here basically giving me a hard time because I use 9mm. And uh, I told oh. him he was a girl. What are they, a 45 so, weenie? Oh, you know, of course. <laughs> and uh, so they just, they're laughing about it. And they said, I aim for the head. Doesn't matter the size of the gun. You know what? That I, I I'm going to throw it out there. Yeah. That's somebody that's never been to a training class. Yeah. Ever. Ever. Anyway, got my, I got my little video. <laughs> all right, you got it all up. fixed yeah. up. Here so we go. anyway, here's the belt. It's got a, uh, my holster on one, or a holster on one side empty, I'm afraid. Okay. Uh, although I have my gun on my hip, I could throw it in there. And then a fully loaded magazine on the other side. And you can see the belt holds its shape, right? I'm holding it by the buckle. Right. The belt holds its shape. Yeah. And that's it, the purpose of a gun belt. Yeah. It's, and it's it's basically, like you said, it's holding your equipment, yeah, not holding your pants it's up. It's to hold your gear. It takes the pressure off your hips, takes the pressure off your body. People put on a cheap belt, cinch it down. They're uncomfortable the whole day. They're in pain at the end of the day. Oh, I can't carry a gun. Yeah, you can. I, I've been carrying recently a Glock 34 
in mm-hmm. this. That's the largest gun. Full size. Well, yeah, it's the largest one they make. It's their uh, six and a half, seven inch barrel competition gun, and um, wouldn't even know you're wearing it yeah. with the right belt. You just wouldn't even know. That's why I love my my drop holster on my thigh. Oh, uh, I can wear it all day. Yeah. Never even knows there. Now, but I was wearing 85 other pounds of gear. Sure. Hey, real quick before uh, before we go to a commercial break and all too, uh, on your you're huh? You're good. I know I'm good. I'm sexy. Uh, nah. the, the holster is that some kind of quick release on, on the, the uh, uh, on the mag magazine? Pouch? Yeah, it's a just a contact mag pouch, and the Kydex bends over, goes into well, a yeah. yeah but what's that by there? your finger right there? There, it's an yeah. adjustment. It's a tension adjustment, so you can oh, get very tension. slick. Yeah, get tension on the magazine. Very slick. There's always a lot of tension on my magazines. Yeah. Anyway, cheap holsters. A lot of cheap you stains on you your magazines. This too. this is a great holster. This is a Blatech <laughs> Phantom. Uh, it's an <laughs> injection molded polymer inside the waistband. This thing comes in around thirty bucks. Yeah, if if you're on a, if you're on a budget and you want a good holster, yep. you can't go wrong with one of these. I use um, two other kinds of holsters. I use uh, actually I'll just pop it out real quick. I use uh, G code. Yeah, Whoa! Easy yeah, yeah. I use <laughs> um, <laughs> I use G code, which are uh, probably I, I think the best holster maker in America, based in North Carolina. This is the um, G code Incog Eclipse holster. It's uh, appendix inside yeah, the my, waistband. My holster is bigger than yours, um, but it takes about twelve <laughs> weeks to get one of these. And then the the other brand I highly recommend, which you can buy at Elite uh, Elite uh, Pawn Elite Gun and Pawn up uh-huh. on Sigmund Road. Yep, they sell Cooks holsters, which are made what? right here in Georgia. What? And is that plug? Yeah, well, it is. <laughs> and Cooks holds, but you know, you want to carry your gear safely and effectively and cook's holsters made in alpharetta uh kind of mid-range pricing and the 50, qual- the 50, 60 bucks, 50, 60 bucks and yeah. the quality is exceptional um and g-code if you want to go all out get the high end feel that it's got tactical fuzz oh tactical tactical. Fuzz. it's called peach fuzz now uh yeah this- it's it's just like a kind of a, a suede no. um wrapper that that prevents the holster now, from shifting. you touched his now he's got yeah touch that's yours. what i was gonna say here's a real holster for outside with uh adjustable and serpa and it doesn't so, have ball fuzz. Yeah. There's no, there's, <laughs> there's yeah. no testicle a, fuzz on mine. It's, um, <laughs> it's a neat little holster. Um, I you, use uh, yours my is, level twos are all Safari Lambs. It's kind of nice. <laughs> yeah. My my <laughs> I really my I really feel bad for the listeners. <laughs> he said, "Ooh." <laughs> yeah. Um, that, that's actually not a bad holster. No, it's not. It's a you know what? It's, I, it's not really. It, it's got a real, uh, you know, yeah. it's kind of set off from the body. though. And you know what? You really got to get that thing latched in there, man. Because yeah. you'll rip. If somebody tried to take it off of you, they'd rip your pants probably before. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing I like about it is it's adjustable. I always like my weapon to be slightly canted forward. That used to be called FBI or FBI draw. They still do FBI yeah, can. Yeah. So I like it just slightly. Now see a buddy of mine, big guy, uh, Ken Morgan, if you're listening, buddy, he always canted his back a little bit because the way he drew, yep. you know? So where yeah. you at? Where you at, McLean? We, we got we gotta go to break. We're going to break. Right. Hey, we're paying pay these the bills. bills. Doc would be happy, man. Yeah. Doc would be happy. Hey guys, it's guns happy. and gadgets. This is just for fun radio. We're talking about holsters and uh Get Xander, a good belt. Get Xander, a good belt and a good holster. All right. Xander brought his testicle fuzz. We'll be right back. Holster. <laughs> Tech to, yeah. <laughs> testicle fuzz. I'm, I'm sweating my balls off today. Really? What's the deal? Menopause, dude. Well, I took my medication late. So I'm a little dazed and confused. Yeah, here. It's just... Uh, that was cool. I was sitting there looking at it going, I thought it might have been a quick release. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, no, it's a clip. I'm, I'm not. I, I'm not a fan of clips. On um, is your juice green or is it? It's the tank. It's the tank screen. I'm not a huge fan of clips on the holster itself. I, I, I prefer the belt loops. But on the mag pouch, it's just and is this real, just a rubber grommet? Yeah, a little rubber grommet, and you uh, screw the, you know, screw it yeah, down. And it, it just down. tensions but you a bit. Can take it out if you. Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. your magazine would fall out if you ran. Very. It's yeah, it's just to adjust the tension a little bit. I like it. Scotty says the holster he has is from you. Yeah, I gave him his holster. Okay, so what I want you to do 
<laughs> freaking, he's very small and said, ah, ha, 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 you're sweating, you're going to die. <laughs> oh, wow. And then he's, he's talking about the Ranger students. He's a, he's a command. He was a command sergeant major. He just recently retired. That man at 45 years old would run you into the ground. He probably still could to this day. What are we on? We still on guns? Oh, yeah. yeah All yeah, right. For a little bit. What time is it? Well, you still got the AK to be. Well, so if because one of you know a big do and don't is get a good belt, get a good holster. That's a biggie. Well, he was also you still had a couple of CCW. Yeah, well, that's one of them. Okay. Uh, I got uh, obviously training. Yeah, yeah. Go, go with that, and we'll we'll throw black rifle AK in there if we can. Okay. Uh, bring it up to right. I don't nine. really know what to say about AKs, but I'll uh, I'll fight you we'll on get, it. Yeah, we'll just tease about. <laughs> uh, then we'll uh, we'll go to Alpha Lupe. Um, right around nine. Uh, we got to do vape. Uh, one hundred one part two. Uh, you so had questions about that. I didn't really. I didn't. Oh shit! I, I'm just gonna talk about the stuff that I saw today. I'm gonna ask you about. Okay, it. good. Because they have good. There was five thousand players. Oh yeah. These had freaking niggas. These niggas, and you could blow a deep cloud with this, but you can't with that. <laughs> I think it's fun. I mean, I I know just a little bit more than he does. So and you know, yeah. I'm only I'm approaching a year that I've been. Let me see yours real quick. It's some kind of a spy or tank, right? Uh, sure. Oh no, it's that the it's a Kanger, Kanger Evolve. Yeah, I mean they're good. Uh, these are good little tanks, replaceable coil heads and shit. Here's his stuff. I got a new coil today. You want to talk about battery. Are. Oh, wow, man. you got to put that lid on. Oh, it is on. Yeah, you don't it's, need, it's like a medicine cap. You don't need to replace the coil until that one goes out or until it starts to there, taste shit. There's his goo. Yeah, no, I'm just saying or you can talk hell. about coil. Oh, another mother? They they talked you into this? Yeah, is it shitty? I didn't like it. I don't it's like decent. it one bit. What, what's your favorite? Uh, I like fruit flavors. I like uh, lemonade. I like this uh, kiwi strawberry. In fact, Rolling Rock. Kiwi, kiwi. Have you? Did you try it? Rolling Rock make a really good kiwi strawberry. Is this about the like two kiwis. women's? Um, but I like. Uh, I I also love black licorice. And you know, <laughs> listen. That was such a British answer. People people say that nobody seems to like black licorice. Um, that was so British. He said, he said the Ranger students. That he just sent me an article. Their periods attract bears. <laughs> 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 what in the hell is that? It's uh, I fucked up my elbow. Oh, uh, I thought I was like part of your watch. No, I messed up in training class, and I have to put this thing on every now and then to get pressure off the tendons. So what happens when you go train? You end up damaging yourself. I so almost did an O today. Did you really? I'm gonna try. It's still air in here. Oh my God! Never had gun training, what? but I've shot so. Oh yeah. Did y'all get it? For some reason, all of mine's going down. I don't get that. You know, I, I, I'm just obviously just giving the guy a hard time. Oh yeah. Because you know, forty forty five is a decent round, but I have a um, I have some audio that I'm pro I'll probably post it to the to the uh, Facebook page. Uh huh. And it's an yeah. uh, interview. You 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 know Masad Ayub, I'm assuming. You've heard Absolutely. of Mass. He did an interview with... Uh, what, a thousand years old? Yeah. He did an interview with a uh, a cop out of Tennessee who got into a gunfight. This guy was carrying a Glock 21, 45. He had three magazines. He, he, now, he downloaded all his magazines by one, so he had 37 rounds total. Uh, 12, 24, 36 plus one. It took him 17 hits with a 45 to stop this threat. The first 14 rounds had virtually no effect. It was the last three, which were rapid fire headshots that took the threat down. His takeaway from that, he switched to nine millimeter. 30 seconds. He, he's gone purely to nine millimeter mm -hmm. because of uh, faster follow-up shots. Absolutely. And, and, uh, and he carries 130 something rounds of ammo <laughs> with him. Jesus Christ. I use nine millimeter. 
because of follow up shots. They're faster. I like and- love shooting forty five. But it's so it's, damn slow. It's nostalgic. Yeah. Uh, the 40 caliber is an amazing round. Mm-hmm. Just comment that. And I tell you what, I'll go, I'll go double tap with my nine against your 40. I tell Absolutely. people that all the time. Yeah, every day of the I'll week. Beat you yeah. every day of the week. I'll beat you like a dog. Every day of the week. I carry five. I carry four, nine for three. Uh, 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 right into yep. the danger zone. I carry nine for capacity and follow-up shots. Uh, that's that's why I carry cheeseburgers for capacity. Capacity, absolutely. Yeah. We'll see. And and, Ouch. and well done. Ouch. Are you picking on my breast? The guy at the store today <laughs> was talking about my breast. Yeah, he was. Yeah, I, I think, he, I had, I I think I, he wanted the cop to feel. No, I asked him if he did. He was just picking on one he of them. Nervous. Though. Yeah. He was I, nervous. He didn't make the other guy nervous. Uh, real quick though, uh, over the break, I got a, <laughs> I got a, uh, email and I decided to go ahead and try to, <laughs> we're really going to piss Doc yeah, off. Yeah. We're gonna piss to. Off now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I shouldn't, but okay. So I get an email during the break and, uh, it's Ranger student, their periods attracted bears. <laughs> I refuse to go into uh, the details, but I will. <laughs> Something about the 5th Ranger Battalion, uh, uh, <laughs> which <laughs> there's not. Uh, but I imagine there will be, and uh, I will be posting this. And for to the individual that emailed it to me, I will be posting your email address along with it for <laughs> All questions, the hate mail. for questions and whatnot. All right, let's see. Where the heck are we? Uh, we still got some gun stuff, but I really want to get to vaping Vaping 101, and what I'd like to do, Xander, I'm going to put you on the spot here. I'm going to ask you on the air. Uh, I would like to have vaping as 101 each week. Give us five or ten minutes about it, okay? We can. Ideally, though, we would have a close-up camera Uh where the people watching online could actually see some things because vaping is a lot more of a visual uh, yeah. well, I get, I get it, I get it. But you know what? There's, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about it tonight, a little bit later. And uh, I went to Rolling Rock today, which is a vendor here in Georgia. Uh, they have, I believe, three locations, and we went to the one that's very close to us. I went inside, and uh, hey, buddy, I mean, you did a great job last week explaining it to me, but I'm not going to lie, I was, I was overwhelmed. Sure. Once again, it's like a noob going into a, a gun shop, man. It, there's just, there's so much stuff yeah but while so, you were there did you ask them yes. what they would recommend for yes. you as a new vapor yes, what, what yes. did they say well i tell you what let's get into that in a minute let's mm-hmm. finish up a couple things we were talking about i know you had a few more things you wanted to talk about as far as uh the right gear yeah well i get gear mindset tactics everything really no i'm not going to get too deep but just, okay. just what i think are, are important when you're carrying most importantly be comfortable get a decent belt good holster and uh it's a war to trust me it's a world of difference over a cheap right. belt now let me um, ask you a question do you carry uh your magazines at capacity yes i do okay yeah i don't I, i've never had a problem seating a, a fully loaded magazine right what about the um, weight what the, about the weight? weight's no problem for okay. me again the belt takes care of that for mm-hmm. me um i i carry a full-size you know, a fully loaded gun and a, a fully loaded spare magazine. Okay. Uh, and a belt and a, fl- and a, sorry, a knife, a flashlight, and um, all, the, all the other crap that we carry around during the day. Jeez. So, uh, yeah. You ever go to the airport much? <laughs> yeah, you know what? You can carry in the airport now. <laughs> Just you can't get up to the metal detector. That's right. right. That, you, can't that's go, you, can't, stop. you can't go into the uh, terminals. <laughs> Unless, of course, you have a Delta Fast Pass brought to you by Delta Airline. No, or, uh, or a U.S. Marshal badge. <laughs> Which, uh, well, you know, okay, never mind. We won't get into that. Um, All right. So, anyway, um, gear right there. Belt holster. Uh, number two, going to harp on this every week. Training. Yes. Go get some training. Yes. I don't care where it is. I don't care if you go to the range with a with a a, a, a buddy who is mm-hmm. capable of training and, you. You know what? Real quick, I'm gonna comment about that. Just because there's somebody that is a police officer does Doesn't not make me, them yeah, no, absolutely not a good shot. Just because someone is in the National Guard, Army, mud puddle pirates, the uh, on Jack Sparrow ship, uh, does not make them. They may be able to shoot. (laughs) But they may may be able to shoot Mm -hmm. because of whatever. But 
instructing some. Well, I don't know about you, but when I instruct, I don't shoot. No, I mean, I, 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 I tell people all the time. Yeah, we'll have five sessions in the range. Uh, you'll rarely see me shoot. Right. And they'll go, but you're wearing your gun. And I, I, yeah, but I don't shoot. Uh, you want to see me shoot when you're done with your lesson? Yeah, come back in. We'll play little games. Yeah. You know, I got little shooting games. But uh, other than that. I don't shoot when I'm instructing. What the hell kind of instructor is going to use your weapon and shoot up your ammo? Right. Come on. Right. I agree. So, if I'm just there with a friend and uh, they, they, they're they asking for pointers, you know, I'm there shooting as right. well. So what the hell? If I'm actually there training somebody, nah. Yeah, it doesn't, I, doesn't I need to. Yeah, I need to be watching them. Yeah, if uh, if if you do have an instructor in mind, listeners, and uh, they're, they're bragging about their, their shooting abilities, if they're trying to put a whole bunch of certificates in front of your face. If they're telling you about all the things, uh, you know what? There's, there's some really good shooting associations out there. And I'm here to tell you, if, if you've got one of these guys with a certified shooting affiliation, more than likely they're great shooters, but that doesn't make them a great instructor. Uh, you know what the, you know what the old thing is? If you can't do it, you teach. Right. So yeah, it's the same right. way with firearms. No, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, I, you know what, whenever I'm talking to folks, I always look for, um, just, just like when you were talking about vaping. Okay. And I'm kind of segueing here, but, uh, if you're comfortable in what you're talking about and you get a little bit more than just on the surface, but you don't go so deep and use a whole bunch of acronyms and a bunch of things I don't, I would, could never understand. But if you're comfortable in the way that you're presenting it, usually you have a good instructor on your hands. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. If, if you've got a, 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 a jack wagon, you know, that's telling everybody in the room how good of a shot he is, uh, be careful. He's, yeah. I, I, I've also found a, a real good instructor won't try to get you to shoot the way he shoots. He'll, oh, no, he'll no. work with you. Yes. You yes yeah. I mean, there is, there is no one perfect way to shoot a gun. Absolutely not. And uh, it, it, just to tell you, too, is that one of the things that I teach is a breathing. Okay. And, you know, mm -hmm. you have the wave, basically. Yeah. The, the frequency wave of your breathing. And there's some people that shoot at the top. Mm -hmm. There's some people that shoot at the bottom. There's or some both. people that hold their breath. There's some, you know. So, and I show that to folks. And they're like, what do you do? <laughs> And I always tell them, well, beats the hell out of me. I'm usually yeah. scared to death. And, you know, they start <laughs> yeah. laughing. See, I can so tell I can tell you what I do when I'm when I'm training. Yeah. I, I'll shoot at the bottom of my at my respiratory poles. That's when I'll holy. Smokes. That's when I'll try to press the trigger. He called it the respiratory <laughs> poles. Well, that's what it is. Or uh, either at the top or the bottom, that natural sure. respiratory poles. That's where I'll, mm -hmm. you know, for, for good accuracy. I don't but, correct but you under when stress, you're talking about vaping. <laughs> but under stress. You don't. You're not even thinking about so, that. Is it, no. is it lum, aluminum or aluminium? It's aluminium. Is but, it schedule or schedule? Schedule. <laughs> this is good. Cinnamon or cinnamon? Okay. No, just, potato. Yeah, potato. Okay. Same thing. Nobody says potato. Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. <laughs> there you all got you. Worcestershire <laughs> sauce. Oh, we sorry. went completely off yeah. topic. Sorry. Right. Okay, that was our break. All right, All right. we're going to count that as right. our non-commercial. And we're back. All right. Yay. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, you've you got some training. You got a good holster. You got a decent belt. Right. Um, I, I hear people say, you know, dress to the gun. I disagree with that entirely. No, I Just yeah. wear, wear wear what you wear. Yeah. But uh, and and I'm talking about concealed now. I'm not talking about open carry. I'm not going to touch Two on very that. Very different yeah. animals. I'm not going to touch on that. I have really no opinion on it i think if you want to open carry go for it i say if you're going to go open carry man get you a uh, get you a big wheel gun yeah uh, get yeah you a big yeah. flashy yeah revolver yeah, yeah. and freaking some cowboy yeah. stuff you know what actually uh, <laughs> let's let's forget I, i'm going to do the rest of this next week i'm going to talk about that <laughs> right there all right so open carry right <gasps> you you that's a good if idea you if you if all if what you can afford is a high point don't open carry. Don't, right? don't buy a high point. Right? But if you've got like a, a really beautiful $3,500 Ed brand 1911, Hell yeah. that's something you want to show Sweet. off, right? But there's a drawback to that. And the drawback is if you, if I will never carry a gun, if I'm not willing to hold that gun out and drop it onto concrete, I'm not carrying that gun. That's why I've never bought a Kimber. Yeah. I, I I'm, never right. bought a Kimber. And I never will because I would never carry it. Holy smokes. Yeah. I'm only going to carry a gun that I'm willing to, to well, destroy, quite frankly. Um, plus, <laughs> click, click, 
Plus, if you ever do, <laughs> if ever anything goes down and you have to use that gun, the cops are taking it. And you can kiss, kiss goodbye to your $3,500 Ed Brand 1911 because the first thing they're going to do is engrave a damn case number into the side of it. Well, not only that, they're going to go, okay, well, uh, so you got that uh, Caltech with the numbers grinded off of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think um, there, there's a place, I think, for, for show guns or, or, you know, safe queens, I think they call them. <laughs> well, um, uh, but it should not be your daily carry gun. Your daily carry gun should be easily replaceable uh within your budget <laughs> a friend of mine said we should have uh, we should wear yellow our yellow pt belts from the army you know those yeah. reflective belts right holy smokes you want to hear a funny story real quick bagram airfield uh north uh, afghanistan or north central afghanistan um if you were walking around at any time shape or form and you didn't have that pt belt on the mps would write you a ticket really yeah really? and you had to pay it or you were in big trouble yeah, because I guess somebody, you know, it's the military's not much in the civilian world. We need jerk reaction as well. Sure. Some knucklehead got ran over. But, uh, and it was so funny to hear a lot of the brass talking about it. Well, oh, I think it's a good idea. I think, well, where, I think we should have two PT belts. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, the military come up with some great shit. I was reading a story today. <laughs> I was reading a story today, and they've uh, they've decided that um, Marine, uh, sorry, uh, who I think it was the Marine Corps have have decided now that uh, Marines can no longer sling their rifle on their back if they're in a uh, uh, combat zone or whatever, or even if, you know if they're on base, if they're on the front or whatever it is they do. Um, they've <laughs> said they've said they've they've got to be slung in front of them, ready to go, right? Jesus and um, it, it came up because they were talking about who who was issued a, a handgun in the military, yeah. and and basically the you know the, the I guess the adage is the smaller the gun the higher the rank, right? So you generally the the handguns are being issued to officers <laughs> and uh, you know uh, staff and things like that. In, in the army, I'll tell you that officers do carry. Um, Officers do carry um, nine millimeters, you know, yeah. the, the M9s. Yeah. Uh, but I, in case in point, uh, one of my best friends, my brother here, he's a sergeant major. He's command sergeant major. Uh, truthfully, a leader of men. Mm-hmm. He carried a pistol because all E7s and above generally have to qualify, which mm-hmm. is sergeant first class. Uh, so they have to qualify. But I can tell you right now, I can rarely ever think of a time that command sergeant major went out. Uh, I'll tell you, his name Barry Smallwood. That he ever went outside the wire with us, and he went all the time. I mean, I got tons of videos and pictures with us. Um, in fact, when the emb- the Indian embassy uh, got blown up, we we're like one road over from it, and I mean, we literally felt the the impact and the concussion from it. Uh, we were actually, I was goofing off on my camera trying to take a picture of him and I, I looked in the camera and went that was the detonation mm-hmm. um and you know in within two minutes we we're just about to become you know fodder because yeah. they were just coming out of the woodwork but uh he let me tell you something that man would shoot <laughs> that, that m4 would come up just as fast as yeah. my m4 would <laughs> yeah. you know so well basically it, what it was you got a bunch of marines who are now having to haul their rifles around, you know, slung in front yeah. 16 hours a day, 16, 20 hours a day when they're saying, you know, just issue us a fucking, so- uh, sorry, issue us a, <laughs> <laughs> issue, us a yeah, issue us a side. Well, you know what? Kids shouldn't be listening to the, to the guns or, right, vaping, eight, or, yeah, or vaping sections of these shows, to be honest with you. Um, so that, you know, they're slinging their rifle on the front. That costs they money d- there, they, they just want to sling it over their shoulder and have a, uh, uh, the M9. I know. An, an M9. <laughs> well, I tell you what, man, you know, uh, see like special ops, you know, freaking MP5s. You got freaking, uh, the army, the basic U S army, the basic Marine Corps for every shooter that you got out there, that's going outside the wire. You probably got ten administrative logistics, and 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 service or administrative, you know, oriented soldiers backing them up. Yep. Why? <laughs> Seriously, why? There are some people that they they really just don't need to have a weapon just because they're in a in a uniform and they're in a combat zone. I'm serious. This may sound really stupid, but there's some people that don't need to carry a uniform or a weapon. They they really are. There's, sure. <laughs> it's scary absolutely scary I, yeah sometimes. sure but if so. you are required to carry a weapon issue on the sidearm too and you would think it's cheaper 
And the ammunition is cheaper. Well, the training I mean, is cheaper. I, I say issue both, a rifle and a, mm. a sidearm, you know. I, mm. I mean, if I'm if I'm hiking around with my rifle, it's going to be slung across my back, and, and my, you know, pistol is going to be readily accessible. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I just I think, think I, I, it, it seemed like morale was a bit low based on this new, uh, new think, decision. Yeah, and that's because the rules are coming from guys that don't get out of the office, right? You know, and they don't know what it's like to ride in a vehicle where you're wearing all that that equipment, you know, and and you're you're crammed in there to where they got to squeeze you in there and combat lock the doors. And there's so much. There's radios. There's blue force trackers. There's you know the candy grams from home, and there's uh, beef jerky and water bottles and ammunition and all this other stuff crammed in these vehicles and you're driving down the street and you're literally stuck in traffic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you just sit there and you go, what the, yeah. what the hell are we doing? You know? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we supported, uh, we supported our operations. Uh, that's why we're there. And then you can see now in, in Iraq, boy, we got off of it. Don't get me started. Yeah, no, all right. Board. I'm getting back to this. God, you bastard. I'm getting back to this. Um, you so, killed Kenny. So appropriate clothing. What goes along with that is uh, don't constantly check your gun, right? Finger checking your gun or, <laughs> or shifting it, shifting it on your belt line I'm, or hiking it up. Again, that ties into having a decent belt to where it's not going to move on you. I always but, um, check with the inside of my wrist. Do you really? Oh, yep. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that uh, uh, flagging. It's yeah. uh, dead giveaway. Yeah, but you know what? There's a, I understand what you're saying. You're trying to surprise. I'm trying to deter. How about mm -hmm. that? And let me tell you something. People people look at my gun and they'll look at my eyes. <laughs> yep. You know, I'm okay with that. Now, this one is going to be pretty unpopular just because of the, the cost involved. But uh, every now and then, at least every three months or so, go out and train with the ammo you carry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, 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 I. Oh, I'll always say buy the cheapest nine mil or whatever you carry <laughs> Buy the cheapest nine millimeter you can to go shoot at the range. Right. But at every two or three months, use a box for your carry ammo. Now, how close are we to commercial? We are about two minutes. All right. Let me, let me bring this up. How do you feel about people training without hearing protection? I, I, I've done it. I've shot indoors. I've trained indoors without, uh, without ear pro. Um, just because you, how, need, how you got you, in, you got to know what to expect. You I, I have mean, to know I mean, what you, to expect. You have to admit, uh, with a rifle, it's bad. <laughs> with a pistol, it's bad. I, I see, I, for me, it's not. Maybe my hearing's just shot. From, yeah, mine from is. Years I mean, I would, you know, I wear a hearing aid in the left ear, but yeah. uh, in the range, I have uh, electronic earmuffs that are flat. Yeah, because I do do rifle and assault rifle training. So, uh, you know, you don't want the big blurry, you know, because you can't get behind a rifle. Right. What, about, what about those ones that... They're electronic? Yeah. Yeah. That's I what I this. use. I use electronic yeah. gear. Pro, yeah. But they like are... When, they're, you, when, it, when, I, when you can do that and it'll... Yeah. Uh, yeah well, but the they're, they're not like this. They're, they're, it's like Mike saying, they're flat. So you can get a cheek wild on a rifle. Right. Uh, I can otherwise, you're, to, you know, your yeah. freaking ear <laughs> yeah. pros banging on your... <laughs> and then pushes your eyeglasses. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, God. But yeah, um, I mean, I'm, I, I would, I'm not saying it's something you have to do every time you go train. If I'm outdoors, it's 50-50. It's, it's if, I'm, if I'm training yeah. outdoors, it's 50-50 whether I bother with ear pro. Yeah. If I'm indoors every time, unless, uh, and, unless it's a specific scenario. I always, uh, I kind of make a suggestion to my students and I say, hey, look, check this out. At some point during the training, I would like you to break the seal yeah. on your cup here. And I'm not telling you you have to do it, but it's, it's important that you understand that if you're going to fire this weapon in your home, down your hallway, yeah. at the front door, that you need to be prepared for it being so loud that it will literally blur your vision. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know... You want to be able to squeeze off that second round because, hey, look, I'm, I'm, I'm not taking my sights off of a dead body. It, it can lay there bleeding yeah. for 20 minutes, and I'm still walking up with that weapon. All right, yeah, we got to well, get a break. It's, we do? Yeah, yeah we got to go break. Damn it. All right. I'll Pay get, the bills. I'll get into All this right. when we get All back. Right, it's, right back. Uh, it's uh, 2035 Guns and Gadgets, just for fun radio. Military Mike Xander, McLevin. We're I uh, we're gone. So now I'm just talking. So the hell with it. <laughs> Sorry. That's fine. <laughs> I want to get into low light shooting because that's just as important. 
All right, where are we going now? Well, I, I just want to touch on low light shooting, and then that we can move on to anything. Move on to baby. Because uh, yep. where I know where I'm at. Hell, you know as I do, that muzzle blast will blind you. Yeah, you know, I I always tell people I night sights. One time. Night sights are good for one shot. I shot one time <laughs> with uh, ear protection off, and I immediately regret it. Tell him Amber Bywater. Say what? Amber Bywater. I don't know what that is. Um, this is Alex, our music guy. Your last name is McDonald, right? Yeah, McDonald, M A C D O N A L D. Uh, I sent you a message on Facebook. Richard, dude. Y'all do know that during a show, this is difficult. Richard Jackson uploaded a new video. Hey, shooting fully automatic. Yeah. You know what kills me is people, people just love that stuff. <laughs> I'm shooting fully automatic submachine gun at Butts County Range during the gun safety course. Really? Why? I'm not. I'm not really sure why. He's shooting full auto at a gun safety course. Yeah, fair enough. Well, you know what? It's cool. Yeah, I mean, I would do it. Oh yeah, they're gonna hand it to me. I'll burn it up. Um, but it has nothing to do with range safety or firing safety or. Okay, Drew, Roger that, General. Testiculars. Holy smokes! Okay, uh, we gotta we gotta call his. Okay, so right after you're gonna do. Then I got to call uh, Trevor, okay? And, and wish him a happy birthday, at least. All right. Uh, I need a number. Yeah. Got a pen somewhere? Zipping right along. All right, so um, you'll do that. I'll do that with Trevor. Then um, we should be pretty close if we have enough time for Black Rivals and AK-47s. If not, it? uh, it's eight thirty. We got an hour. By eight forty. Yeah. Oh, don't we can stretch. Yeah. Nine thirty minimum. Whatever the hell time this I watch is saying it is. And then uh, we got Alpha Lupe. How much does that cost you? Like, uh, well, it should have been three fifty, but when they came out, it was you know it was all online pre-orders. So I got one off of Craigslist. I paid five hundred, um, brand new in the box. The guy won it in a golf tournament. Wow! Yeah, Jamie bastard. He won it in a golf tournament. Put it up on Craigslist. So I bought it. He wanted like six hundred. I offered him five hundred, and he took it. You called him a what? So, bastard? Uh, oh, a Jamie bastard. Lucky. I mean, it's it's lucky. Yeah, so He's you can have America. you can have okay. that word, jammy. Oh, if we will uh, be discussing that in a minute, I was playing. <laughs> I well, I can't remember. Was I was doing something with? We're some, gonna have uh, a British British second of the of British uh, British corner. I was. I we were doing British something with cards. Maybe maybe playing cards with friends or something. And uh, something happened, and I looked hey, at one jammy, of my mom. I looked at one of my girlfriends, and I said, "Are oh, you jammy cab?" <laughs> she did initially initially until i explained oh no that's just a that's just a british thing doesn't mean anything bad you jammy wine you jammy cat special forces carries the 220 really what special special forces carries what now we got 46 hours oh the p220 well the navy seals do yeah. I don't know any other Army. special forces. Yeah, Army doesn't. SEALs carry them. Army was carrying HMKs. Well, mm-hmm. Is that the M10 or something like that? Ready. 30 seconds. Are you serious? Yep. Wasn't much of a break. We had a five minute. Song. When are we back? Uh, when the music starts. All right, I'm going to go straight into low light. Low light shooting. And then after that, uh, we need to make this phone call. Okay. Uh, my uncle John is a gun guy. Today is his birthday. Yeah. 
and we're live in five, four, three, two. Wayne's World. Ah, did I fool you? Did I trick you? Okay, we're having uh, the British word of the minute. Uh, <laughs> uh, Xander, <laughs> Xander said a guy that won something was a jammy bastard. So explain what jammy means. No, that's you got to call in and tell us what you think. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Call in and tell us what jammy means. Uh, go ahead, Xander. He wanted to carry what he wanted. Yeah, uh, I just want to pick up where you left off. You were talking about shooting without ear pro. I, I want to talk about shooting in low light situations. And uh, if you if you can, if you get the opportunity, shoot in low or no light. You know, people, I uh, last week I touched on the what I think is one of the most important things you can have as a flashlight. Um, you know, and people say, well, I got night sights. Then that's fantastic. Night sights are brilliant for one shot. That muzzle blast uh, ruins your, your night vision. It'll destroy it. You, after that first shot, you're going to need light on that target. You need light on that threat. And uh, when you go and spend all that money on the uh, compensated version of your uh, don't semi-automatic. Do, don't do that. <laughs> one, you're not going to have any eyebrows left. Mm -hmm. And uh, two, it shoots a giant V. Yep. I had a, tw a Glock 22C, yep. and I thought I was cool. I, yeah. uh, you know, it's a great gun, but well, in, in low light, it's useless. What I was looking at is the vented barrel. Basically, the compensated barrel was going to allow it to not... Sure, right, not, reduce muzzle flow. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so... Until you get... And if you're not using eye... You know, if you're not wearing eye protection, you get a face full of gases and... Uh, Cordite. You mm. can't see shit, so yeah. there you go. All right, so uh, we're going to do a little bit something different here. Uh, we do this a lot on the morning show, um, but we're going to try to incorporate it to uh, our evening show. We're about to, uh, I'm going to call a guy. Actually, uh, McLovin's calling him. I'm just going to, I'm going to act like uh, I'm somebody else, and I'm going to prank him a little bit. It's his birthday. It's one of our callers' <laughs> uncle, Uncle John, I believe. Are we ready? I were oh ops. I was born ready. Slick. Ready here we go, President. And uh, bill collector, what do y'all think? Bill collector, Missouri, Missouri bill collector. The subscriber you have dialed is not in service. <laughs> if well, you feel you, all right. Well, thanks for calling. That, that was a that was a great <laughs> prank we did there. Uh, so we're going to be moving. The, let me see the number. Make sure I got <laughs> yeah, it right. Make sure you call it right. All right. Uh, so the flashlight thing. Hey, look. You know what? People used to complain because when the small handheld flashlights like the uh, Streamlights and the Surefires, yeah. okay, these things were god-awful expensive. Yeah, that's not. Yep. They had, uh, that's not the right. Me, he, gave, he gave you the wrong. Okay, okay, so we got a bad number there. Okay, we'll try in the morning. How about that? Uh, and these, when you call him, be, a, be like a political pollster. Well, it's, apparently you weren't paying attention there, Jamie. Um, it's a bad phone number. I said when you, if you get him tomorrow. <laughs> You didn't say if you get him. To I said when you do you call him. You have been hanging around with Scotty. Yep. To start. You've been shooting too <laughs> often without ear pro there, brother. No, <laughs> be a, just call it. Be a political pollster. Talk about Hillary a lot. Oh, God. Yeah. A census taker. Yeah. And and be really one sided. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go, yeah. Go, who who are you interested in? You're, in you're interested for? in Hillary, I'm sure. <laughs> or no. <laughs> or get him to tell me Trump and go, no, 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 Hillary. <laughs> I just yeah. keep screwing with them. Yeah. Oh, that would be beautiful. Yeah. I would like somebody to try that on me. Freaking Latter day Saints. Okay. So uh let's see where we're at. We're at about a quarter till. So uh let me go ahead and start an argument real quick. Black rifles. Nope. Uh the AR fifteen versus Awful the AK forty <laughs> the AK forty seven. Fantastic guns. For what? Uneducated for, for everything. Uh, uneducated. Uh, I I explained to him an today. AK an AK could take down a mammoth at a thousand yards with one round. I don't. Believe if it accidentally tripped him, sure, maybe because you know <laughs> sure. you can shoot him in the mud. <laughs> sure, that's, listen, that's you what know, everybody. <laughs> here's you know I, I said I I'm gonna play devil's advocate <laughs> and I'm I'm gonna advocate for the A AK. Uh, but, I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I, I, I own it. I have an M4. Yeah. I, I, M4 you know what I think? I'm a black rifle guy, but there's a lot to be said about the AK. Yeah, it's a piece it's, of crap. It's, well, it's not a piece of crap, uh, though, is there's it? There's no it's, windage uh, adjustments. It's probably one of the most simple it's, designs on the planet. <laughs> it's, if it's you're going for simple. very, very reliable. It'll run in virtually any conditions. It'll overheat at the drop of a hat. 
and and uh, accuracy. I mean, you can get a good AK. You can get a reason, a pretty good accuracy out of an AK. But a, a you know a stamped uh, stamped receiver, cheap barrel. Yeah, they're I mean, they're not fantastic, but yeah. they're they're good enough in a pinch. I mean. Yeah, I mean, there was a reason why they carried so much ammo. Yeah, I mean, they, good hitting out of them. Yeah, seven eighths of the world does okay with them. Yeah, well, do they? And do I, they? And I got to tell you, I like the seven six two. I do like that range. It is a you know, I'm 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 a three oh eight kind of guy. I do love it. But so uh, you uh, do you, do you have an AR ten? Uh, no, because I don't believe anything uh, other than two two three five five six should be in that frame. Yeah, I, I, and again, I'm in, I mean, I. You're I, asking. I'm right there with you. Yeah, I mean, you're I'm asking a, too much yeah, out of that lower yeah, receiver. I'm a, I'm a five five six guy. So uh, and, McLovin, um, you have anything to add to this? Uh, you know, normally I carry the M4. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I'm a black rifle guy as well. Yeah. yeah. Good on so, you. He, but no, I mean, I like the AK. I, the rush. I especially man. like the uh, PAP AKs, the AK pistols. Yeah. I really the, do. I like those in the uh, the scorpion, not, basically. Yeah, yeah vodka, but not even. in um, not in seven sixty two. I like them in uh, five five point five. Yeah, yeah, five five point five nine. Uh, yeah. five forty nine. Sorry. So, uh, also uh, now look, I'm not gonna lie to you. I had a lot of time with the SVD, and uh, for a squad level uh, precision weapon, uh, basically uh, an SVD with an LPO scope which is the scope that clamps on the side for our listeners. Uh, it's a very basic scope, and it's it's very easy to do range estimates mm -hmm. through that scope. And uh, there is absolutely no recoil. And I got to tell you, whenever I'm doing that long-range stuff, I love that grip inside the shoulder stock. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I, you know what? I, I think that's such a great way to do it because you don't, uh, you don't necessarily have to put your hand in there. You can put your hand under there and just raise up on your knuckles just to get that little bit. And uh, if you've ever done any long range shooting, those little itty bitty, itty bitty, itty bitty, that's a bitty, itty Can't talk that much. So uh, the little bitty adjustments are what make a difference at long ranges. Yeah. yeah what's, right. what, what would you consider the purpose of that rifle? The SVD? Yeah exactly what it was designed for in soviet platoons of uh basic infantry they for each platoon they had two snipers they really didn't receive too much additional training so that's why i call them precision shooters or they were generally the best shooters in the platoon they still had an ak mm -hmm. uh but they did they were issued two svds per platoon now ironically enough the soviet sniper battalions were generally made up of women they, they that's they, interesting they got, yeah. like the israelis yeah the the sniper battalions one they're ruthless mm -hmm. they're just absolutely ruthless and they and that's what it, you know a sniper is not just all about uh freaking making long shots and but it's about demoralizing you know motivation it's about reconnaissance it's about uh having a reliable set of eyes out there and uh, the Soviet women were just more accurate than the uh, conscript, yeah. than the regular everyday soldier out there. So, uh, yep. I, I, I think if I were going with a long range precision rifle, I think it would have to be the PSG one. Oh, sweet. I got, yeah. I mean, that's just, yeah. uh, that's basically a modified uh, HK 93. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, pulled that one out, didn't I? You're impressed. Just say it. Just freaking wow, say it. Wow, Mike, you're so good at guns. Yeah. Uh, just say it. You know, that was cool. Um, Actually, uh, German. That's, that's one of my favorites. Yeah, the Bundeswehr. I'm not going to call it a sniper rifle because I hate it when people do that. Yeah. But, uh, it is. You can reach out and touch somebody. You can certainly can, but I'm not a sniper. So. Yeah. It, it, you know what? And I did. I used to do a uh, presentation for the folks in Afghanistan. And because there's a lot of Chechnyan snipers, these, these are school trained snipers. If you haven't been to a school, you're not a sniper. Right. You're a freaking good shot. Right. <laughs> what else can you say? Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Hey, uh, let's uh, let's make a little transition now. Uh, it's coming up on the 2100. We got about 10 minutes. Uh, Xander, do you mind if we, on a weekly basis, do vaping 101? We we sure can. I'll uh, I'll wing something today, and I'll have to think about um, a a progression to go over that that. Well, I can talk about rather than, you know, show visually. Right. I, I, uh, the reason why I'm saying that is because, uh, I, well, I mean, we can start tonight with McLovin. He has a great starter device in his hand right here. Um, is that got anything to do? Oh, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, -huh. uh, uh -huh. no, I had the opportunity to talk about it. 
Uh, we will I, I'll probably get on to that. I, after I had break. I had the opportunity to go to Rolling Rock uh, Vapor today, and uh, I walked in and hey, really great guys. Let let me explain something to you. The the windows are kind of blocked out, you know, with their advertisement once, so you can't really see inside there. So when you go, when you open up that door, one, it's a hell of a lot bigger than I thought it was, you know, and it's not like a freaking head shop, mm -hmm. you know, like the old, uh, uh oh, we got a call. Call This is never good. It's probably that wrong number. Hello, this is Gun for Gadgets. Hello. Hello. Is How this, you doing? Is this Alpha Lupo? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. Uh, so you just went ahead and called in. That's what, hey, perfect, perfect. Right. Well, I guess we're going to video games. Yeah, instead. we're going to talk about video games first. Uh, I tell you what, you know what, McLovin, I'm going to turn it over to you, buddy. All right. Uh, talk about some of the new games that are coming out. That's gonna that's gonna hit the new gen new generation systems. Uh, what's what's the big E3 was a couple. Uh, I'm going to say a month ago almost. Uh, what was the big What was the big reveal? Uh, a lot of the big reveals, uh, everyone was excited about Fallout 4. Um, it's supposed to have almost uh, three times the map size that Fallout 3 did. Um, and, and, for, uh, and, and that game is, a, is an open world game, correct? Yes, it's open world. You can do anything you want. And I see and, your face, Mike. Yeah, what the hell what, does What's that an mean? open world gaming system? Or gaming. Yeah, what's open world gaming? I love being the old guy. Wait, uh, what'd you ask? What's open world mean? Open world is that you can pretty much just walk around. You can go do quests. You can kind of uh, meet up with certain people. I mean, it's a single player, so you're not going to be able to meet up with friends that you know or uh, through the internet or anything else like that. But it's going to be you're walking around everywhere and pretty much killing things and more than likely dying a couple times. So it's a lot like real life. Uh, yeah. It's as close as real life is as, as open as, as a video game can get yeah. i mean you but then you're dipping in virtual reality but oh we're dipping know. into something yeah what what else what else what other games were huge there um some of the games that were huge um you have let's see you have the new assassin's creed coming out mm -hmm. which is kind of uh, it's a little hype um, you also have the new Mad Max that's based off of the uh, old series of, uh, quite frankly, the movie series and things like that. I'm kind of, I'm kind of actually looking forward to that, hoping that it's somewhat decent. Yeah. Um, then uh, you have the big ones: South, uh, Battlefront, Black Ops Three, Star Wars Battlefront. Um, yeah, battle. Yeah. Now I remember Battlefront. Battlefront Star was a Star Battle Wars game. That was the, let me a little backstory on me. That was the first game I've ever played was Star Wars Battlefront, the very first one, and uh, I played it from six a.m. to probably about till I went to bed that night, and oh, yeah. it got me into first person shooter or yeah, yeah, first person shooter, and it got me into Star Wars even more. And it just it opened my entire childhood to. That's cool. So it has Klingons and everything in that game. No, that's Star Trek. And if you say Klingon one more time, I might come over the table. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that British stuff over there, okay? Yeah. Jammer, <laughs> you jam, jammy, <laughs> jammy. No, but uh, no. What, what's different? What's different with the new Star Wars Battlefront game? Sorry, I'm kind of one sided, but um. Oh. What's different with the new Star Wars Battlefront game than the first two? Okay, well, a lot has actually changed. Uh, Disney, of course, bought them out and everything. It was kind of upsetting because we thought it was going to be all cartoony and shit-like. But um, uh, pretty much they've actually done it pretty well. Uh, there's a new fighting squadron to where it's just aerial uh, fighting uh, with the X-Wings, the TIE Fighters, the TIE Bombers, actually, which is pretty cool. Um, they're actually implementing to where you're, you can become the Millennium Falcon at one point in during the game. Sort of like pick a, up a, power -up. a superhero kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I saw your face light up, Xander. What yeah, was no, about? I was going to say one of the, uh, one of the very first games I ever owned was on the PC and it was, uh, a TIE fighter. Oh, really old. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. an old DOS, uh, DOS based yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. fantastic. Yeah. It was all freaking just lines. It was lines. Yeah, it, it was brilliant. It, of course, of course, it it's evolved completely. Yeah, really, unfortunately. But, 
Un- no, no, no. Retro games, I have a have a small part in my in, in my heart, but I love the new gen stuff, and I I, I like I like the cutting edge of video games. Uh-huh. So what um, else? What else was was a huge thing other than Star Wars? Uh, and for all the Xbox fanboys out there, uh, the new Halo Five. Yep. Um, that's I mean that's caught them a lot of attention. I look forward uh, new story, kind of breaking off from the old one and everything like that. Um, but then you, of course you have your EA crap sports that tend to <laughs> drag a lot of people into their revenue per se. <laughs> um, NFL Blitz fifteen. Yeah, let's uh, let's not be uh, any, let's not uh, you know sugarcoat anything. Tell us how you tell us how you feel about sports games. Yeah, yeah let's just it's the same thing, just coded and put you don't like sports out. games. You're not a sports game. Mm-hmm. No, it's redundant and repetitive, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. it was the the most the most redundant sports game is darts. That, <laughs> yeah, freaking darts. Are you talking about on a darts. video game? Or yeah, like, yeah, video game darts. You have the, this? these these people are too lazy to go to a bar, drink a pint, and throw some fucking darts. They That's have to do we don't it. Have they have here, to. Mister. They have to do it on their computer. <laughs> we don't have pints here. We have bottles of beer. No, we have pints. Shut up. We have pints. <laughs> All right. So nobody plays the Wii anymore, Xander. You know that, right? Yeah. I got it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. No. no, no I mean, I, it, there I, were there I, were darts I, games on the iPhone. They're they're ridiculous. I remember the Wii. Go drink a pint. Throw some darts. The, the Wii man. is a friggin' joke. <laughs> the Wii is for uh, for low income. I love. I, <laughs> you, you know what? I I don't have a Wii. I don't have a Wii, but but it's great fun doing that bowling. <laughs> Oh, I don't that know what to fun. say, Scott. Just, just so everybody knows that uh, <laughs> McLovin, <laughs> McLovin said that we was for low income families. So, uh, did he us- hang up? I think he hung up. Did he? Uh, no, no, no he's like, I'm right, so we can, we can I hit <laughs> So tell, uh, tell us, tell me more about Halo Five. I have a friend that's uh, a big Halo nerd. Well, they haven't killed the gen- they haven't killed the storyline yet. Unfortunately, no. Oh my god, it's still yeah. living for some reason. They should have killed it about three games ago. You ain't kidding. What yeah. else is he gonna we, carry? I mean, good lord, he's got um, now laser now plasma played. chainsaws. <laughs> they haven't really come up with anything different. Uh, they haven't come out with new stuff for it, like a trailer or whatever. But apparently, there is like this new guy that's pretty much about to take down Master Chief and some of the trailers. Um, Uh-oh. Uh, like an assassin or whatever. So, Didn't he get killed um, basically in the movie? You're saying if you, are, if you are afraid of online play and you like a single-player mode, play Halo because they have a nice story. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. If you, want, uh, you, if you want to be tucked into bed at or, night, or play just, Halo. Just send me seventy four ninety nine, and I'll date your mom. I played Halo... Uh, <laughs> I was I played on it was Steven went and did something so I t- picked up his controller started playing he was playing um, I don't know something with a hammer smash hammer some kind of stuff like that you run around and hit people with hammers the the last respectable <laughs> Halo game
says, all right, we're back. And okay, <laughs> so that was <laughs> so basically, y'all miss Scotty showing <laughs> us his flashing man. off the twig and berries. His, <laughs> No, no, we didn't. No. no, a simple yes or no. Uh, nice one, brother. And these two know, guys and these two guys got a full frontal. You know, yeah. you know, I didn't know. <laughs> full I didn't. I didn't know where ball sacks ended and foreskin Ooh. started. Oh, uh, uh, it just looked like a sack. Hey, hey, listen, nobody can call you a Jew. It it, no, it 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 looked like a sad job of the hut. And if you get if you get circumcised now, you can make a briefcase out of all that. <laughs> God, it's disgusting. I'm surprised it doesn't go below his uh, pant line. Man, I bet you can tell how cold the water is just by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he can't tell you how cold it is, but he'll tell you how deep uh, it is. Oh <laughs> wow! I I now I'm rocks. thoroughly confused. <laughs> Uh, hey, hit, I might hit. be straight now. <laughs> <laughs> I might, I might, I might get be. a woman. Yeah, it might not me. Yeah, you know, it's it's a guess. Uh, Either boy. every day I wake up. Uh, you wanted to cover a, oh. a few more. Well, we're on break. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and you just forget that. No. Yeah, we're talking. Damn it, they pretty much had a break. On yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. Xander, you wanted to cover a few more things on vape, I think, uh, or did we? Or we can, we? Or, we, or his or little we, beginner shtick over here, I mean, and then we've got nineteen minutes. Yeah, I, well, I wanted to uh, make sure that uh, I what what nine thirty twenty one thirty baby. Yeah, uh, I I need I want to talk about Freedom Outdoor Adventures again. Okay, and their raffle. Because I, I think mean, we've got nineteen minutes. Uh, so uh, I know, but he was going to talk about your your Wait, beginner stick. Yeah. Are we on? Yeah. I thought we're, you just said we're on a break. No, no you're, you're on, on a break. break. You're all British. Right. That's why y'all lost the um, war. Um. All right. So McLovin <laughs> here came in with uh, a, a new electronic cigarette. When'd you get this? Uh, about a year ago. Oh, okay. So you've had it a while. Yeah. You just a didn't bit. have it last week. No, I just. And uh, <laughs> Mike, this is. Um, it's this a sissy is, stick. It, well, it's this is a like a typical starter device. I, I was talking to you last week about an ego with a thing I'd say that looks kind of like a cigar about cigar right, size. Right, right, right. Yeah, well this this is roughly that. And this is a uh, ego battery. This one is is made by Kanger Tech. They call it the Evod battery. Now is this a, a rechargeable unit? That's it is. EVOD, yep. yes. Okay. It's rechargeable. The and charger, this has right, the yeah, this it. has their um matched tank, their Kanger Evod tank. Now and everybody, uh, listeners, and I know we probably lost some folks and all, but YouTube, uh, listen, this is this is a, a, a hands-on kind of. He's it's a visual trick, and uh, so if you're you're interested in more vaping information, uh, each week we'll be covering this stuff, and and, and it I'll is post, something I'll post pictures. Okay, yeah, and it is something that you have to to watch on YouTube. All right, so this is the um, this is the battery part of it. This okay. is uh. It's a rechargeable battery. Right. Uh, I'm going to say this one's about probably 800 milliamp hours. All right. Now, uh, let me ask you a question correct. on the battery since we're talking about it. Yeah. Uh, is this a battery that you need to let all the way uh, discharge? No. No, I mean, uh, that's what yeah, I with, mean, with, so. yeah, with, uh, okay. batteries, um, batteries don't really have memory conditions anymore since we got away from... Uh, Freaking NICAD, I think it was, was right. the last ones with with a memory condition. Just yeah. yeah, this is a lithium polymer. This though is a, a fixed. It, it's a, it is a regulated battery, but it's regulated at three point seven volts. Right. Okay, so there's some protection built into this battery, and it will put out three point seven volts through its uh, a discharge cycle. Um, whereas you know we were talking about this one this one's variable i can <laughs> increase the voltage or or lower the voltage yeah, that thing's a beast yeah this one's fixed it's regulated at 3.7 pardon me now on top of this is the evod tank and i would recommend something like this tank for anybody that's new to vaping yes um because the the draw is very much like smoke it's to cut you know uh, a like cigarette. a cigarette yeah, yeah. now right. i i told you i went to a a, a place today uh, -huh. uh rolling rock here yeah. here in georgia yeah and uh they have an amazing array of uh test i what would you call it uh what do you call it there xander sample uh not xander but uh 
I, they have like flavor samples. Pro- yeah. yeah, there's yeah. probably a hundred. About a hundred. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that were set up, and then uh, they give you something that they uh, jokingly refer to as a condom, and uh, it's. Well, I mean, this is the actual size I buy too. So, uh, <laughs> but I'm going to, I'm going to hand that to you. And let yeah. You it's kinda... uh, it's it, all that or is, not. Yeah, yeah. All that is, is a piece of rubber to cover the mouth piece. So you're not putting your mouth where other people's mouths have been. Um, what I did, <laughs> did you catch I it? took, yes, okay. I took McLovin's mouth piece out <laughs> of his tank and put my own in there because I'm, I'm trying this out just to remember. It's been mm-hmm. years since I used something is like it, this. It, what? Let me, let me, let me see yours. My device? Yeah, sure. Oh, wow. See, so apparently... And, uh, just hit the button to draw on it. Okay. So um, apparently, once you become a vapor, uh, you guys are completely okay with touching each other's stuff. No, we switch mouthpieces. Uh, this is still my mouthpiece in his device, and that's his mouthpiece in mine. In yeah. <laughs> now, I use 18 milligram. That's why. Yeah. Anyway, I, I recommend this kind of thing for somebody that's, you know, just getting into vaping because uh-huh. the... Uh, the the tank is set up for what what's called you know a mouth to lung hit, the same way what? you would smoke a mouth to lung hit, okay. the same way okay. you would smoke a cigarette, draw it into your mouth and then suck it down into your lungs. Um, I got I got to tell you that today when I tried uh, the the whatever flavor it was, you said you know it was twelve. Okay, it was twelve. That is is that the that's less than what I have. That's, I know, but twelve. I, that's I thought that was the nicotine. Yeah, that's what I. What do you have? I'm talking here? about the draw. Okay, so it's yeah. more than what you twelve is higher. Now. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah, mine's less than twelve. Oh, oh, which is all right. Now testing. y'all have thoroughly confused me. What I'm talking about is one. One, I didn't care for the nicotine. I'm going to go ahead and say it's been a long time since I smoked. Sure. So I didn't really care for the nicotine. I didn't care for the actual flavors I was trying. Uh, and then the one fireball, I didn't. I didn't get that sensation, that visual sensation of blowing out the vapor. Mm-hmm. So I didn't it's really a cloud chaser. Yeah, pretty much. I guess. Yeah. Um. Flavor, yeah. flavor in those um, in those testers that they use, uh-huh. they're you're not going to get the no. best flavor out of no. them. You're just not going to because I, know, it, I, I still got that. I guess it was the nicotine. Yeah, you may have been yeah. tasting the nick and probably getting a nick head. See, off normally of it. I, I've never been that. in a shop where they offer nicotine in their testers. Test. In their testers, maybe I don't know. Maybe they don't. I, I thought they did, but maybe they don't. I, I the no every here shot they that did. I've got yeah okay okay because yeah, I asked every shot mm. that I've gone to it's been zero nicotine really yeah huh. interesting so it was uh that was interesting to say the least I think if I do start doing this it won't I won't have the the nicotine yeah I, I well you're not a flavor. smoker there's no point why why get addicted to nicotine just go with zero nick and right and a cool know, flavor yeah that will attract girls and, and enjoy perhaps it, they'll you know a, the a, underwear get a, get it get a device I would say for you. Get a device that's more like a more like using a cigar, right? Something with with a a, 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 a more open draw where you right. get more vapor, yes, and and you get show. those long, you know, good satisfying pulls on them, right? And you get to actually sit back and relax and and get a nice, you know, if you want, I I avoid tobacco flavors just mm-hmm. because I don't like them, yeah. But there are some really good cigar flavors, yeah. Um, so, and and that I'm telling you that visual. That visual sensation, that visual cue, or whatever you want to call it, feels like you're in a bar in the '80s. It felt when I the first one I tried was fine. It was actually very nice. Yeah. But then when I tried the other one and I got nothing, and I said, "Am I doing something wrong?" And he goes, "No, certain ones don't do that." And I'm like, "Man, why? I mean, why do it?" Well, you find what works for you. Yeah. yeah. You know, I th- this is what works for me. I. I I like this. I like the K fun. <laughs> I like the flavor I get off the K. It's the best flavor yeah. I've gotten off of any tank. That's, that's you have to admit flavor, the yeah. flavor on that. No, that was, was good. That was yeah. I got to tell you, man. I didn't notice last week that it has like a digital readout on the top of it. Well, yeah, you have to know what power you're putting through it, right? Jesus. I'm at. Uh, <laughs> so right now we need on to this- talk about. Uh, <laughs> late, not now because it's gonna yeah. throw him off the wagon. But um, we <laughs> need to talk about the the, the, the electronic. Uh, pipe like pipe looking ones like the, oh yeah the, the english pipe or the yeah uh, you French can get pipes. um uh, they come in all shapes and sizes there was one released get, like, a couple of weeks pipe. ago yeah there was there was one released a, a couple of weeks ago that's uh, a knuckle dust or you know brass knuckles <laughs> yeah it, it's it's uh, uh an electronic cigarette in with uh 
brass knuckles attached to it. There's, well, that's just uh, weird. There are some really nice looking pipes. I mean, well, handcrafted, you know, I, uh, handcrafted wooden pipes wooden pipe, that take yeah. uh, well, atomizers. Didn't, didn't a gentleman tell us he had one of those at, in in wood? Yes, uh, there was a guy we met at uh, Gravity, and he makes them, handcrafts them mm-hmm. out of bamboo. Bamboo, that's very nice. Yeah, that's what. Yeah. There's a, you can get anything, anything you can think of, you can get. There's a ton of wood mods. Um, now, if you're new, don't pipes. don't go to your friend who makes um, <laughs> go, who makes them because. You, well, see this. Gonna, he's going to burn again, your lips this, off. This this all comes back to safety, <laughs> and uh, it's going to burn every, your lips um, off. Every device I have was made in America by an American company, right? Um, no more outsourcing. Well, I listen. I don't want to say. <laughs> I don't want to say. You're talking about uh, putting a lot of power through a low ohm yeah. coil, right? And I, 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 I don't want to sit here and say I don't trust the Chinese to do that. Well, oh, we don't have regulation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no regulation. But um, what a southern Chinese guy. <laughs> Hero. And I know, Hero. I know there are companies Dirty that have had a lot of p- problems with their devices. Yeah. Like uh, there's one company called Pioneer for You. They make the IPV line of uh, electronic cigarettes, and they've had a, a lot of what electronic does IPV issues. Mean? No idea. Okay, I have no idea. <laughs> All right, cool. But the, but they they have the IPV one, two, three, and four. The IPV mini, the IPV yeah. net, every. Thing you yeah. can think of it's just like a brain but um so many of these things have had uh, there was one device they put out that had a charging plug on the side of it and about two weeks later the company said don't use the charging <laughs> cord really why well there were reports of it freaking melting the electronics do they not right? test this so or? that's yeah. the thing i yeah. they they don't they come out with something like the so ipv3 fast. came out yeah. and then a month later the ipv4 came out no they there's no testing cycle for these things out of gotcha. china which is why and now i i can't sit here and say the the american made devices are any better they are better however i haven't heard of any problems with these american made i i got to admit american that, made that's, it's not that's but <laughs> the, the the ego batteries have been around for so long and as right. long and as long as you're only using a you know a little tank with yeah. a you know 1.5 or 2 ohm coil you're yeah. going to be fine yeah it's it's um it's devices that are designed for people to to sub ohm on you know, run their really low coils and pump a lot of juice through it. Yeah, Stress, and make big clouds. They, yeah, make massive twat clouds. And uh, <laughs> they're just like, deep said it again. And, Man, and, those uh, guys, those guys <laughs> at the shop today were freaking blowing. They were twat clouds. Oh, my God. Yeah. It looked like they had fire yeah. extinguishers, man. Yeah. It was just bellowing and, um, out. That's, that's where cool. you can run into problems. If if there's an issue with a device, it's going to show up under those conditions. Man, they, they, so, they got to uh, have like a tank the size, something to wear on your back. Well, I mean, it's it comes down to buyer beware. No, uh, you have to understand. Um, if you're going to get into that cloud chasing, you have to understand battery chemistry. You have to understand Ohm's Law circuitry we actually talked about ohms law yeah. in there today and um if you're gonna stress your device and your batteries that hard you need to know what you're doing it's not for beginners right. and well, i know was, uh, and and i hear so many you know i hear shop owners all the time people come in and you know brand new to vaping and say i want to blow clouds <laughs> well y- yeah but do you want to <laughs> blow your face off along with those clouds is, yeah is the question. i do I want to blow clouds. Just like with everything that has to do with anything. <laughs> Here, uh, there's this, a this, safety. This there. will be this. You, you won't get any clouds. of this. But um, a guy guy came into the store one night, and this was um, this was well, I'm not going to say where. Came into a store, and he, he brand new to vape. And his first device, he bought a. Uh, it was a stacked, a dual stack twenty six six fifty battery bomb well there you so, go anyway you're you're basically taking these big ass batteries stacking them on top of each other in series going from 3.7 to 7.4 volts right no way and now and uh he wanted he wanted the shop owner to make coils for this thing which is, and he wanted them low he wanted i want so i'm clouds bro clouds right he wanted the massive clouds fucking idiot so <laughs> so anyway i said i said to um we, i ended up building cost money i ended Wee. up building the coils for it right because and and i i made sure i built them at high 
you know, a high resistance. Mm -hmm. So I, I wrapped two coils at one ohm a piece, which brought the total resistance down to about half an ohm, yeah. which I think was still way too high, especially on a, you know, on a stacked battery mod for a brand new vapor. But that's what he wanted. But I didn't want the shop owner to do it, you know, because the you know, liability, obviously. So I said, well, I'll do it. I'll build him. And Jeez. if he blows his face off, he can come after me. He doesn't know where I am. That's right. Not a lot of guys out there with British accents from Australia. <laughs> and yeah, there are very, very <laughs> few of those. All right, real quick. And and I if 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 it will work out, sir, I sure would appreciate it. Uh vaping 101. And we'll have part three next Tuesday. Mm. Um well anyway, I do just let's just recap. Uh this Evod Kang or Evod. Um Simple 3.7 ohm, uh, 3.7 volt battery How with, a, with an run, Evo tank. Know? It really varies. You can buy them online, probably for a pack 30 of, bucks. Well, yeah, I got a pack of two for about nine. You can buy a starter kit for, you know, $60, $70 these days. It'll come with a couple of batteries, a couple of tanks, some replacement coil heads because inside of this tank, uh, you know, the coil head is where you unscrew mm -hmm. when it goes bad or if the flavor goes off or something, you just unscrew the old one screw in a new one, fill it back up with juice, go back to vaping. Um, it's a good starter device for somebody coming off of cigarettes that doesn't want to blow clouds. Okay. Yeah, here's, um, it. here's here's a replacement. Here's a coil head. Right. right. You you can't that. Screw that yeah. It's got I mean, the cotton in nobody it. Nobody can see that on the camera no. there, but that's no. a coil head. No. It looks like a little um, baggie of cocaine. Yeah, it's uh, not that, obviously. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's uh, it's like, a not. Like yeah. Engineer during the day, he's like, yeah. Let's just see what what resistance um, is this. It should say, hey, uh, if if no, we no. could, let me uh, let me just jump to this real quick, and then we're probably gonna have a commercial, and that'll then yeah. we come back. I want to talk about Freedom minutes. Outdoor Adventures and their raffle and what they do to help uh, disabled combat dudes like me. And then, uh, guys, believe it or not, it's gonna be time to get out of here. Hey, uh, why I was there today. Um, the, the the owner or one of them or I, I i probably stole these uh he basically let me have a couple of magazines i'm holding it up for the uh the youtube watcher guys and uh, this one is news business and culture vape magazine and uh you know it's got this european girl on there and it's talking about special edition from europe it's probably not actually european yeah she's I, in fact i've seen her she lives in alabama um but uh, here's the thing is, uh, the question I had from this was, did this start here? Did it start in Europe? Um, uh, it started in China. Yep. And mm -hmm. I know why. It's because. Hookah. No, because uh, hookah is uh, Indian, in Indonesian. I, I know. Uh, but this started because uh, little Chinese kids have a lot of batteries, and they're the ones who started it. <laughs> no, it was a, a, a little Chinese man, and why wow, that sounded really racist. A uh, Chinese gentleman, <laughs> little Chinese. Man. Sorry, little Chinese oh. man. Oh, yeah. So, uh, a, a Chinese gentleman. I believe his name was Ruan, Ruyan, or, or whatever. Bullion. Uh, his name was Ruyan. He he invented the uh, first electronic cigarette in. Um, and blimey, I want to say it was like. Did you just say blimey? Yeah. You're not. <laughs> You're not Cockney. Why'd you say that word? Oh it's a British word. It's not I necessarily it, Cockney. 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 No, said, man, I just Cockney. had like a, a Harry um, Potter flashback. It was, uh, I, I don't recall the year. Oh, it was it, it was either the late 90s or early 2000s. He invented the electronic cigarette. I um, wonder if he died poor. I doubt it because he also came up with the, uh, he came up with the first flavored tobacco e-liquid RY4. Uh, uh, R.Y., mm. I believe, was a play on his name, Rian or something like that. That sounds tasty. And it, it, well, it's a mix of, <laughs> it was a mix of tobacco, caramel, vanilla, and, and um, diesel fuel. Something else. Now, <laughs> see, see, this is why people won't vape. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah. It's full of diesel fuel, bro. <laughs> Where'd really? you think those clouds no. come okay. from? No. Um, <laughs> Where does all that vapor come from? So, anyway, he invented it in China. It came here. Uh, I want the, the I don't know if you remember, but in the mall there used to be kiosks in the middle of the malls, and they would say they were selling. Uh, I don't like the mall. They so. were selling cigalikes back in like two thousand four, two thousand five. Yeah, uh, I I was out of the country for a while there. Yeah. So, uh, um, 
and um, it just it just kind of took off from there. And, it's, and it's, I feel like it's I'm selling more, a subscription. It's it's bigger in Europe right now in England and Europe than it is here. Um, I would yeah, I would think. And so. and what we really need to talk about is regulation. Not not this week because mm -hmm. it's going to be too much. But uh, we need to touch on regulation and uh, and try try anybody that's a vapor when you visit your local vape shop just insist that they join the Georgia Vapors Association because this is going to this is the trade organization that uh, that hires our lobbyist that that goes to the capitol and fights all of these bills that come up to try and stop us vaping it's the uh, Georgia I, okay yeah that's a it's the Georgia Vapors Association it's what if part they're not of from uh, Georgia there are there are vapors associations every, every in state. each. Well, not every state. The ones that are getting organized ha have started their um, vapors association. They're uh, hiring lobbyists and they're fighting back bills. It's too late for some states. Indiana, for example, they they were not organized, and uh, they passed uh, some legislation last uh, this year, I think, which pretty much gave a monopoly to a single company. You know, uh, liquor distribution. Liquor yeah, and, yeah, same well, thing. Well, their, mm -hmm. their beer and liquor, their main distributor, got the, the sole rights to distribute e-liquid, and we need to avoid that here. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we got to head off to a break. Thank you for listening to Vape Corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, vape Part 2. All right. Three, see you in a bit. All right. We're going to do a commercial. We'll be back. Maybe. All yeah, right. Regu regulation's a biggie because uh, the regulators could shut all this down. <laughs> and we got to fight them. And, you know, restaurants... Restaurants have representation. They have associations they belong to. You're allowed to all, do it in my bar. All vape shops should belong to the Georgia Vapors Association. I, I won't. I won't actually shop anywhere now that isn't a member of the Georgia Vapors Association. And Rolling Rock is. I think. Not yet. I I've talked to Josh about it, and and Chuck. I've talked to them both about it a number of times. And J Josh said he's going to join. Uh, the last time I spoke it's, to him, he hadn't joined. <laughs> just can't. I, well, I can because I've so many idiots out there. But somebody in a restaurant going, you can't do it. I just, well, well, I I don't like vaping in restaurants. Uh -huh. I'll vape in a bar, mm -hmm. right, yeah, uh, all bar. day long. I don't vape in restaurants. I I tr because again, the, the 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 one the thing that will that will get us heavily regulated are people complaining about it. Yes, right, yeah. and I I know it's harmless. You know, it's, it's a, especially to to uh, like passive vapors. You know, third parties, completely harmless, but it still has that stigma attached to it. I mean, who wants to be sat there eating their you know foie gras and somebody's off in the corner blowing a fucking cloud? Who wants this? I don't. I don't. I want to eat my foie gras in peace. I think they should only allow. They should only allow goods, certain by the way. Uh, ohms. <laughs> In, well, uh, I, I in do. Bars. I think if you are going to, yeah, if you are going to vape in because public, you should. When I'm eating up. my food, I don't want. I want to be able to see. Yeah. My food. You can you can stealth vape. What? Look. I know it's called ghosting. See, the longer you hold it in, the less vapor comes out. Hmm. So you can stealth vape. You don't have to be. The vapor will dissipate. Yeah, you don't have to There's blow clouds or... everywhere. It's what, ridiculous. What but yeah, no, I, I think it's uh, good manners just to uh, not vape. I just is is the web down again? No, come on now. I just want to end the show and go. <laughs> you want to just want to end the show and go? I just want yeah, to get some go. sleep. We don't have to go back and get some water. No, I got to do this for Freedom Outdoor Adventures, and then we're gone. Huh? Then we're gone. Yep. Right. Well, time's out, ain't it? Just bring me back whenever you're ready. I'll end this bad boy. Okay. Shit, we could go for hours. Uh, yeah, we've been here since like <coughs> six thirty, seven. Uh, I've, well, I've been up since four thirty, and I got to work at six this morning in Marietta. What part of Marietta? Uh, Bell's Ferry Road. Mm. Bell's Ferry Road at one at forty one. This is the work off a. Of Cobb Parkway, and then I worked off of South Cobb Parkway, then I worked off of freaking Windy Hill and Austell. Mm -hmm. I don't miss those folks. Betcha they miss me. <laughs> yeah.
Uh, they probably do. No. They don't. That's me. Loaned out a lot of money up there. How long we got? Hmm? How long we got? Oh, two minutes. I'm going to talk about Freedom Outdoor Adventures. And then wrap it up. Uh, thank you guys, you know. Yeah. Okay. And Pretty much he's going to outro and then I'll be like, all right, guys, thank you for listening. All right. Next week, everybody bring in your everyday carry gear. I do every day. Go over everyday carry. Just bring something. I don't have it. Whatever you carry. You can what have do a, you carry every day? I don't carry it. Do you carry a phone? Yeah. A wallet? Yeah. Your vape? Yeah. There you go. All right. bring, I'll give bring you a chem light so you can be cool. You, can, you come in with a chem light. I'll bring you a gun. You want a chem light? Yeah. You want me to bring a sniper rifle in next week? We'll save that for the last of the month. What's that? We'll have like our big rifle that night. Rifle night? Yeah, uh, rifle yeah, night. Rifle night every be month. Every night. For every now. night's a rifle night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll bring in rifles. Oh, I got once a, every month. I got a cool rifle. I got a new optic on mine. I need to zero. I got a cool rifle. It's cool. Because I've tried to zero a scope on one of mine. Really? So, um, this guy's telling me in the store that his ex wife's an angel. And I went, wow, really? Because mine's still alive. <sighs> My ex-wife was named Angel. That's weird. Mm-hmm. Well, considering her behavior, very weird. <laughs> <laughs> On those corners and heels, your legs must be hurting. Shut up. <laughs> FOA Colorado is watching us. All right. FOA Colorado. Who's F- that? FOA. I got two. Uh, They're watching. That, freedom. Yeah. Freedom Outdoors. Oh, Freedom Outdoors. Adventures. Yeah. Yep, that's so uh, that. Door Adventures. What is this, and why have I not seen it until now? Uh, that is a uranium P thirty eight eliminator. <laughs> oh, it's not one of those yelling things. Um, no. What does it do? Those are only in Britain. Oh, is that a Marvin the Martian ray gun? Yes, and it's a fart gun. Uh, it's from the new movie. <laughs> oh, I don't want to see that. It's a fart gun. I, it doesn't work. It it kind of sputters. Uh. Done. Are we going back to the show? Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ, kids. And we're live in five, four, three, two, and one. There we go. We were just discussing the uh, Marty the Martian uranium P38 eliminator gun, but it was brought to my attention that it's a minion's fart gun. Hey, listen, uh, I wanted to uh, close out tonight's show uh, kind of like I always do. Uh, I, I think it's important that all of us in the uh, entertainment or, you know, on air, I think we should all have uh, charities and whatnot, organizations that we uh, we work with and we help. And uh, I have a couple uh, being retired. You know, I have probably a little bit more time and, and I deal with Carly and little young lady, she's nine years old, and we, we gather up uh, crowns and all, and Rich Archer is kind of our point of contact there, and he uh, he sends them up there to her. This little girl's nine, and she does more than 10 people I know uh, to help other children that are not feeling well. She says that coloring makes her feel happy, so she likes to give kids that are sick. Uh, then uh, today, I spoke with a, a young lady who helps uh, veterans. Uh, dealing with their their claims and uh, Ambrose will be calling in next week and uh, kind of giving us a lady's point of view on the topics we're talking about just so we keep this uh, on an even keel. Yeah, look forward to hearing from her. Yeah, she, and, and she's a dynamite shooter. Uh, she really is. She's a great shooter and a great person for, for helping the vets. Um, then uh, the I talked to a young lady uh, with a, a program called Skip. And this helps children that are dealing with uh, parents that suffer from uh, post-traumatic stress disorder and uh, children of folks, uh, former military uh, individuals that have committed suicide. Uh, The one that's uh, close and near and true to my heart is uh, Freedom Outdoor Adventures. And the reason being is is Freedom Outdoor Adventures basically is operated by uh, a large group of folks, and they're pretty much in quite a few of the states. And uh, these guys are all volunteers. It's 503C. It's a nonprofit. And uh, the president, uh, Brandon Mook, uh, M-O-A-K, is, uh, he's still active duty in the military. Now, he's broken up. He broke a leg in a 
Now I saw he was on another heart monitor and all that other stuff. But this guy, I mean, he gives <laughs> he gives probably half of his paycheck, which his wife probably wants to kill him. But uh, and and he's still running around every weekend, going out and uh, picking up disabled combat vets. Now here. Here's the trick. All right? This is this is what I want you to think about. For guys like us, before we went in the military, and even when everything was perfectly fine with us, our health, we, we did a lot of hunting and fishing. We're that type of person. Well, what happens is, is uh, you know, due to the conflicts all over the world, we get deployed. Now, when we come back, uh, sometimes, you know, uh, our injuries are are inside and and hidden but then we also have the physical disabilities that we have to deal with uh and you know the the largest uh killer in afghanistan was ieds so you have a lot of these guys that are returning now our families love us and they they love to take care of us they really do uh but getting a guy like me let's say uh back out in the woods i don't want to go back out there because I have issues and I, I really just going to a range and shooting works for me. I'm just shooting at some paper targets. I'm a happy guy. But uh, a lot of guys really just long for that deep sea fishing trip with their buds, that hunting trip, uh, even a 22 and going and shooting squirrels, which I did every other day when I was growing up. Um, so once you're in a wheelchair and whatnot like that, it's very difficult for your family to get you out there. Well, Brandon and his group, uh, his pro staffers from Freedom Outdoor Adventures, they uh, they show up in this beautiful pickup truck. And uh, if you're in a wheelchair, man, they might load you up in the back of the truck, you know, put some goggles on you and they take off with you. Now, the thing about it is, is when you're a combat vet and you're dealing with folks, you smile a lot and you thank people and all that other stuff. But when you're with former or current soldiers, it's a whole different frame of mind. You're back with your brothers and sisters. Uh, you get to loosen up. You get to have fun. You get to laugh and you get to talk trash like we always do. Uh, you know, Freedom Outdoors does this. Uh, they sell. They have a complete line of stuff that they sell. And they all the proceeds go to these trips because each and every month they're getting more expensive, you know. Uh, so I tell you what, the, the big thing here is, is, is guys like, uh, retired Sergeant Major Barry Smallwood. Uh, he's part of the executive group. Uh, he's in this state. Brandon's in Texas with these guys talk all day, every day, Facebook, emails, uh, phone messages, text messages. And basically what I'm pushing for today is, is they have a win an AR 15. It's, it's $20 per ticket. All of the proceeds go towards. Freedom Outdoor Adventures and and doing this uh, alternative rehabilitation for our combat soldiers. Uh, basically, twenty bucks buys you a ticket. The drawing is going to be on the first of November. This is a, a high speed low drag. It's a beautiful uh, AR fifteen. Now it doesn't have any sighting on it, so everybody just relax. No EOTEX and stuff like that. But uh, it is a it's a <clears throat> excuse me. It's an M fifteen A four black carbine in five five six. And uh, you know I was kind of thinking about this because they're only going to sell four hundred tickets, and from what I understand, these things are going fast. So uh, you know what? If you make a hundred dollar donation. Basically, you're getting five tickets. What we figured out last week, Xander, that's about one in one 80 in chance. Yep. That's a sweet deal. All right. So, uh, hey, look them up on Facebook, Freedom Outdoor Adventures. That's that's where all the real up-to-date information is. Of course, they have websites and phone numbers. And uh, if you have any trouble whatsoever, you can contact me either through the Just for Fun Radio Facebook page or the Guns and Gadgets Facebook page or the Military Mike Facebook page or the Mike Madsen or just just Zuckerman, just call Zuckerman right now and say, yo, bitch, get in touch with Military Mike for me, and he'll do it, because if he doesn't, he knows the deal. Uh, with that being said, um, let me tell you something. It's been a long day. Yeah. it's <laughs> My underwear is, is just sweaty. <laughs> uh, we know Scotty's not wearing any. Got a bit of swamp ass going on. Got, a, got some sweaty balls going. I ain't going to lie. It's late. I can say that. Uh, Jacob, uh, you gave us the wrong number. We called some weird dude who didn't know who we were. It's okay. It's a it's robot. Cool. It's a I don't robot. trust robots. No, neither. They scare me. Xander, buddy, thank you so much, man. It's always a pleasure. You're a very knowledgeable guy. Thank you. I really would have went further with the accent and said I was from Australia because chicks dig guys from Australia. Chicks are just scared of guys from, from Britain. Yeah. Chicks, chicks dig guys from England. No, no, they don't because no. you guys lost the war, dude. And I'm sorry yeah, I wasn't you know here. What? Look, is there any pictures of you guys on Stone Mountain? 
All right, bite me. Uh, so <laughs> now uh, <laughs> there's a uh, there's a photo of me at the top of Snow Man. I bet you there is, which is and it's which like, is don't let that's him the in only here. that's <laughs> the only rock the yeah, British has ever it's, conquered. In and America. I'm kind of higher than all those other guys, so <laughs> that counts for something, yes, right? The Ten most wanted list. Uh, apparently, the FBI is looking for you about something. I not going to get into that. It's a long show. <laughs> Uh, he is an engineer, so he knows. Tyler, please things. tell me, McLovin. Sorry, that's your screen name. Yeah. Your well, not screen, but on air name. My screen name. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what am I? Showing show my boobs for bam. for for coins bam. on the internet. Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> show I'll, my boobs for Bitcoin. I'll strip for Bitcoin. Check it out. <laughs> Stripping and you you pay in Bitcoin. Look, look, baby, I'm making it rain. <laughs> click, 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 click. You ever seen uh, you ever seen little people do sign language, deaf little people? Okay, that's not that funny. <laughs> Are you coming to work tomorrow in the morning? Uh yeah, I guess. Okay. Doc Doc, Doc, Doc when I Man, I miss Doc. I do too. It's been a while. I don't know, man. It would have been a little tense it's, this it's, morning if yeah. it's here. It's been a while. Ooh. It's it's yeah. been a while. Is that a little dig at her uh her uh, attendance, attendance right there? Yeah. It's been uh, a little while. This morning it was probably a better idea. Uh-huh. <laughs> so uh Doc's we'll be back. Uh of course, uh thanks again, just for fun radio for having us. Yep. Uh, Just Fun Radio is an internet streamer, and it runs 24-7. So when you're not listening to us doing absolutely silly stuff in the morning from 7.30 to 10. No, we're not regulated show, by the FCC we, at all. And you know what? We can't even spell FCC. So we can say Teddy all we want. <laughs> <laughs> Scotty's like, damn it. He said Listen, I, I think, on, honestly... Said, yeah, uh, I was going to say, well, yeah. I think on a, on a Tuesday night when we're talking about guns and vaping, <laughs> I don't think there are many kids listening. So, uh, Yeah, good save. <laughs> and if there are any kids listening, you were adopted. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, well, you were showing it off half the show, brother. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, can we just get by that? Uh, <laughs> listeners, Jeez. look, guys, I appreciate y'all, guys, girls. Uh, I know it's a little bit off the kids. cuff. Uh, kids, I apologize for the F word from the Australian <laughs> dude. Next week, he's bringing a dingo and uh, he will eat a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else to I, say. I, I, God. I, I'll eat a baby. Uh, I, I mean, whoa, if that's whoa, a thing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. We're on okay. camera. All right, fair yeah. enough. We're on camera. Yeah. So uh, That was recorded. I ain't bring it. If you want to bring a baby. Yeah, that's why the FBI is looking for him. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, great times. Good friends. Chinese food was great at lunch. Yep. Scotty bought lunch. I know. Freaking dogs and cats are sleeping together. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> uh, what else? That was a great show, guys. Thank you very much, listeners. Thank you, viewers. Thank you. Callers, thank you. Callers, yes. thank Alpha you. Lupe. Alpha Lupe, thank you. Uh, the guy who invented the fart gun, thank you. Thank oh, you. yeah, thanks a lot. And the guy that invented those in minions, <laughs> thanks a lot, I'd bro. like to thank the Academy. <laughs> Do they have minions in Britain? I'm sure they do. And what do they point. call them? Minions. Well, no, they're good. That would be. <laughs> that, yeah. Catholic priests. Ouch. We're leaving on that one, guys. All Thanks right. a lot. Yeah, guys. Have a safe Tuesday. All right. See you. <laughs> Mignon. That would be, be in France, wouldn't it? Mignon. Mignon. All oh. right. And we're stopping YouTube eventually once I figure oh. this out. Why? <laughs> oh. Nothing. Uh, this thing's going out, Scotty. So we're still live on YouTube, letting you know that we're trying to fix 